All right, everybody, welcome to episode uh, 11 of the Killer Main podcast series. Today we are doing Sadako, uh, who is also known as Ringu, also known by many other names. And uh, we have the lovely Freddy here, an ironic name, the more I think about it, to uh, talk about Sadako as a Sadako main. Uh, and Freddy, if you want to introduce yourself, go right ahead. Hello, my name is Freddy, as in, I was introduced. I am a Sadako main. I have over 4k hours in DBD, and I've been maining her since she came out back in 2022. I have been playing since 2018, and I mostly play Sadako every match. Um, and I also mainly post content on Twitter. And is Twitter, do you have, you have a YouTube channel though, right? I do, but I don't really post on it. Um, I mainly just use it to like post clips, so I can like download them and shit like that. <laughs> Fair <enough. laughs> YouTube is it, it's. I tell people this all the time. If you ever like want to do match reviews or whatever, YouTube is literally an unlimited, uh, unlimited gigabyte uh, place to put your stuff. Yeah, exactly. I love storing my clips on there to save them for later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, at Twitch, you don't stream or anything like that. Nope. All right. Fair enough. So I'll, I'll go ahead and post the Twitter down below. Freddy, Freddy's on there a lot, um, for better or worse. <laughs> I I do, yeah, I post a lot on Twitter. Um, if if you want to hear me ramble about uh, Sadako, uh, I ramble about random horror movies on there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I, you want to, yeah. Yeah, I found you because you, you posted a lot about the Chucky movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Seed is still a bad movie, by the way. Okay, can we admit that? I'll, okay, okay, so <laughs> okay, yeah. So Seed is is definitely probably the worst, uh, but it's my favorite. Oh no, yeah, don't get me like that's fine. I'm just saying, can we at least yeah. admit it's just a bad movie? Yeah, now, like I love it's, Seed. I do. But it's such bad it's, it's my favorite, but it's so bad. It really is. Uh, <laughs> man, I'm glad Don has uh, kind of embraced how bad that movie was um oh yeah <laughs> all right so uh how long have you been playing dead by daylight so i've been playing for almost six years like i said um i started when legion came out so december 2018 right actually right after legion came out uh that was yeah yeah d december 2018 jesus yeah i know how many? Yeah, I like I got to go on the game and experience old Legion right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, as someone who wasn't there during that era, how long did it take for people to like figure out uh, the quote Legion tech? Oh God, I I can't fully remember because it was so long ago. But I think I remember Zubat doing like videos on it during that time, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I I specifically remember like some legions doing it in my games too and i didn't understand why they were doing it <laughs> and then i was like why am i dying instantly to mend and that's why <laughs> god old men. for those who don't know the way old men used to work is uh if you weren't in chase the bar would go down yeah it was so bad <laughs> um yeah not not the smartest move from the devs uh god i could, I could not imagine if that was still on the game today I know it's so bad. Um. Yeah. Uh. And uh, how many how many hours do you have in the, in the game? I have four thousand five hundred. Not as they don't take anything by this, but not as much as I thought, or not as not, it's it's less than I thought. I don't blame you. <laughs> um. Well, no, because I have people come on here and like I have like eight thousand hours, and I'm sitting over here like, dude, I have like two. <laughs> yeah like i see people with like 10k hours sometimes and i'm like jesus <laughs> i feel so small compared to it i don't know I, I take it as a badge of honor because i have a lot of people say i don't play like i have 2000 hours which is yeah, exactly so exactly. strange i can't think of any other game where people would say something like that i know only dbd where like 500 hours is considered low <laughs> jesus it's yeah um so why why Sadako? Okay, that's there it's pretty deep on why I like her. Um because when 
I joined the game originally and I started playing, she actually was like my most wanted license for years. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted her in the game. And the moment that uh, they announced her, I, I instantly was hooked. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> because before she came out, I was a Huntress main for the entire time that like I was playing between like 2018 to early 2021. Um, I only played Huntress and a little bit of Nurse as well. But once Sadako was announced, I was like, yep, I, I'm manning her. I don't care what her power is like. And then <laughs> when her power, when I got to play her, I loved her power. And I was like, okay, this is my new main. <laughs> I mean, I know some people like criticize her power for being like, oh, it's just Freddy with Wraith. Um, and then throw in Pyramid Head, I guess. But I don't know. Her power works. I, I think it, as far as, and we'll get into this with talking about how well she was adapted. Her power works. Like, it, I, I think it's it's really good. I think her power is so satisfying, and I think it's way more satisfying than people give it credit for. Mm -hmm. Like, there's moments where you get three condemns at once, and it's like, holy shit, that felt so good. Um, or like, you just cut someone off of a TV and chase, and I think stuff like that makes her really fun. Yeah. Um, do you think the uh, they announced her too early? Because I know that was kind of a point of contention when, because uh, it wasn't leaked. It was the the devs I, said she like they they announced her like what six months before. Yeah, I think it was um it was uh, like three months before. I think it yeah. was like December, and then she released in March. So it was about three months. Um, I I don't know because. That made me more excited for the PTB that they announced her so early. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I f it feels like a missed opportunity for them to like start teasing her seven days before the PTB. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> and then, like on the seventh day, you just like the teaser or the trailer is just her tape. That would have been so cool. Um, I I I do wish they did that. <laughs> yeah, I've criticized uh, Behaviors marketing team sometimes because I feel like they do this a lot. They, they they're kind of better about it, but I feel like they announce things way too early. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I'm trying to think of another killer that they kind of did that with. It wasn't really a killer, but they did it with the lights out game mode. I was very upset with that one. Oh they, yeah, yeah. Because they like they announced it like three weeks before it came out. I've talked about this a lot. They announced it three weeks before it came out. Then they were like, "We're doing a dev stream for Alan Wake." Um. And we'll show the game mode there. So the assumption I had was, oh, they're going to show the game. They're going to release the game mode like right after the stream. No, they were like, no, it'll be out in a week. Yeah, I, I was really disappointed about that, too, actually. Um, I remember like the stream ending and I messaged one of my friends and I was like, where the hell is the update? Yeah, I was so confused. <laughs> yeah, like I kept restarting Steve and I was like, where is it? <laughs> it's. Yeah, as far as killers go, I mean, other than leaks, um, which isn't their fault most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, yeah, I think as far as, like, like teasing killers, they do a decent job at it. I do, like I said, I think with licenses, though, they, because there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff we don't see, because I, part of me thinks maybe they had to show it off early because of the license. May yeah. I think, like, with Chucky, for example, I think they did a really good job with Chucky. Mm -hmm. uh, just the build-up of Chucky, I think, was perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I do wish Sadako got a little more breathing time before she got revealed, though. It, it was. It's also like she didn't really even get that much fanfare when she came out. No, not really. Uh, I feel like people were excited at first, and then the hype kind of died down like a month after. Yeah, it, we'll, we'll get into this with the with the whole adaptation thing again, but it's like, she's also one of those characters I feel is more, she's more, she's too iconic for her own good, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I feel like she's kind of similar to Pinhead in that way, almost. Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah, I would agree with Yeah, that. where she's kind of, she's iconic, but she's also niche at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone knows her, but yeah, yeah, I don't know very many people who've actually seen, I mean, I know plenty who've seen The Grudge. But um, oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I think people get the grudge and Sadako mixed up, actually, like 
they I remember when the teaser came out, some people were like, Oh my god, it's the grudge and I was like, No, it's it's Ringu. <laughs> yeah, I I mean it's 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 a very common thing. It's also because I mean it's let's not pretend the grudge wasn't pretty much trying to bank on <laughs> Oh yeah, it came out literally like a year or two after Ringu did, so I, I completely get it. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, because it's not like 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 it's because even like because I've said this before about Pinhead. As much as people l like to be like Pinhead is like an iconic horror character, he is. But my parents still don't know of the Hellraiser movies, and they are like in their sixties. Like, <laughs> mine don't know about it either. Mine aren't as old, but they. My mom like she loves horror, and she actually got me into horror at mm -hmm. like a younger age, and she still hasn't seen the Hellraiser movies. Yeah, most people haven't. Like I said, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're cult following movies. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the th most people know Pinhead from like random reference jokes and other things. Yeah, like they 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 know the iconic shot of like him with the pins in his head, but they don't know like anything about his character. And yeah. I think Sadako is the same way. Mm -hmm. Like they know the 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 girl in the white dress with the hair covering her face, but they don't know anything of actually about her. Well, I mean, she's also based off a, a, a yokai, basically. Um, True, yeah. So I'm sure that, that helps a little bit. It's a very iconic image. Um, either, yeah, either that or they, they know Samara from The Ring, like the, yeah. the American version, mm -hmm. and they don't know Sadako. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, <laughs> and then there's Yoichi. Um... <laughs> Uh, I love Yoichi. I I love Yoichi as well. Um, I actually really like what they did with Yoichi. Um, I think it was really unique mm -hmm. because I don't think anyone expected that. Yeah, it was great. I feel like um, they, I'm sure they couldn't fully do the same thing they did with Ghostface. Uh, yeah. Where uh, for those who don't know, and if you play this game enough, I don't know how you don't. Ghostface isn't licensed from the movies. The character Ghostface isn't licensed; it's just the mask. So Ghostface is in this weird limbo where, like, he's half licensed. Um, so they're able to take more liberties with him. Uh, and I feel like they kind of did that with Yoichi. I'm not sure. Once again, we don't know the behind the scenes stuff with licensing in this game a lot of the times. Um, yeah. Yeah, they they aged him up, and um, he looks entirely unique in DVD compared to how he did in the movies. Because I don't think there was ever a grown up version of him in the movies. I'm trying to remember. I don't think there was. No, I I don't I don't think so. Even in the sequels, I don't think there was. No, yeah, I don't think there was. So yeah, he's he's interesting that way. And for people asking, why didn't they do that to Andy Barkley? Okay, listen. Okay, I think they should have done Kyle instead of Andy if they did a Survivor. Well, here's the That's, thing. I, I, yeah. I, know, I know why they didn't do it. Um, I'm almost positive on why they didn't do it, and I'll never say it. Alex Vincent, the guy who plays Andy, has said multiple times he is done acting. That's true, yeah. So I am, and, and more power to him. I know the fans love him, but if, he, if the man's done, the man's done. Uh, so I'm pretty sure as a kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, in order to like be, be given to his blessings, they wanted to not involve him, which is yeah, like fine. I think that's fine. respect him. Yeah. yeah. Same with Kyle. I, I don't know uh, as much about her her actress, but I think she's basically the same way. I don't think she's really in much. She's mostly just in the series now. So yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. My idea for a survivor for Chucky was Nika, because I thought that would be fucking amazing. <laughs> okay, Nika would be cool, though. You're not wrong. <laughs> I would, like... like no. What would be even better is if it was uh, Chuck Nika. Oh, yeah. And, um... I don't know. Like, I want a, a survivor that, like, is really entwined with the killer. Not in, like, like, uh... How do I explain? It? Not like how Yuichi and 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 Sadako are intertwined, right? Like they're intertwined <clears> because <throat> that they're enemies, basically. Not not really. Someone will correct me on that. I'm sure. But uh, like a like a survivor who like knows the killer. Yeah. Like 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 is in their brain somehow. Not literally. Yeah. But yeah. That's that's an interesting idea. I never actually thought about Nika for the survivor. That's that's really interesting. It would also be great because Fiona Dorf. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I love Fiona. Yeah, I absolutely love her. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, stop, uh, to stop geeking over Chucky for a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, are there any changes? Because I'm sure someone listening to this is going to laugh at this question. Are there any changes you would make to Sadako after her third rework? So, I don't know if you saw, but when Behavior originally nerfed her, I I went into their replies and I was like, these changes are absolutely horrendous and you need to reverse them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, personally, I don't know. I feel like with Condemn Lock, they could increase it to four instead of three. Um, and I say that because I still feel like three is such a small number. Um, and I still catch myself slugging a lot as her. Mm. I don't hook as much as I would like to. So I think increasing the, the cap to condemn lock would be a change I would want. Uh, yeah, that's mostly the change that I would want for her, I think. As with a lot of things like that, do you think that would be better as an add-on? Instead of I base kit? It, I think that could work as an add-on, actually. I'd never actually considered that. Um... They could rework like one of her terrible add-ons into yeah. that, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know, I know, people get tired of me talking about Chucky all the time. He's a character I play. All right, he's the one I have the most context for and validity. Um, mm -hmm. people, you know, they got rid of his one eighty flicks. Um, sad days. Anyways, my suggestion has always been, uh, if if they want, I understand why they don't want to bring them back. I do. Uh, to his base kit, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, my mm -hmm. suggestion has always been rework mirror shards so it increases your turn rate. That's, yeah, I think maybe if they did, like, if they, uh, I don't know if it would be, like, a purple or a green. I think they probably could do a purple because her purples are kind of weird. Mm -hmm. They could rework, like, um, telephone to where you can add, like, four stacks to survivors if you hook them because telephone's really bad <laughs> yeah and she doesn't she doesn't really have too many add-ons that like outright change how the power works does she no not really i think the only ones are really ring drawing and eerie tape what is what is is ring drawing the the they get a stack if they heal somebody uh no so what ring drawing does now is if you hook a survivor holding a tape all other survivors get a condemned stack and I say that kind of changes how she plays a little bit because you can get crazy value from ring drawing. Um, it's really strong. Um, but also the funny thing is ring drawing is actually bugged to where that effect that you mentioned of survivor's healing, that still applies. They never removed that, that effect from her previous kit. Of course so, they didn't. So ring drawing has two effects. Of course they didn't. <laughs> It, it's been in the game since January, and they haven't fixed it since. Behavior, listen, I know people call me a shill for you guys sometimes, because I try to speak positively about y'all. For the love of God. <laughs> y'all make it hard sometimes. Wait, I want to run it, but I feel so bad running it, because it's just so strong. <laughs> uh... Elephant in the room, though. Uh, <laughs> bloody fingernail. Oh man, I I am a bloody fingernail addict. I run that out on every single game. Um, but I I don't know. I think they did overtune it a little bit. Um, not because they changed bloody fingernail, but the base changes that they made, mm -hmm. I think, made bloody fingernail a little overtuned. Um. I think it's such a good add-on, though. Do you, I'm biased. Do you think... Because uh, I heard someone suggest, do you think it should have a cooldown? Maybe? Mm. Or do you think that, would even, that wouldn't even really change much? I don't think that would really change much. Um, I see the idea there. I'm trying to think of how that could work, actually. Um, I mean, it would, it would stop hit and run Sadako, I guess. I guess, but I also feel like that would make it feel kind of clunky to run. I don't really love cooldowns with her. I feel like adding cooldowns to her teleports in some way always makes her feel just clunky. Um, I think that would be something they should test in the PTB if they ever were to like consider that. 
just to see how it feels. Yeah, and I think the type the, of thing. The, the obvious thing is just lower lower the speed it gives you, I guess, just a little bit. They could make it like forty five percent, maybe because it's fifty percent right now. Mm-hmm. I think that would be fine. Yeah, is uh <laughs> about to ask a math question. Uh, is is that an additive bonus or a multiplicative bonus? I believe it's an added bonus. Okay. Yeah. I wonder. Well, yeah, because she's one hundred and fifteen. So yeah, if they if they upped it to if they upped it to seventy percent, but made it multiplicative, I think it would be fine. That that could work, yeah. Because that would make it for those for those who aren't math fucking nerds like me, uh, that would make it about a forty percent buff overall. Um, because hang on, one hundred and fifteen subtracted. Yeah, about 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 forty percent. You got a calculator? Correct me. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and then. She's actually one of the few killers I would say has uh, some pretty decent brown ones too. Oh yeah, um, I think her brown add-ons are really solid. Uh, in my opinion, I think videotape copy is the best one though, mm-hmm. because videotape copy extends the radius uh, that survivors can condemn from um, TVs in general, and I think that on like an indoor maps is game changing sometimes. Um, even though it's only two meters, it's really good on maps like Midwitch. Uh, would you change anything about her uh, quote-unquote counterplay as far as the TVs go uh, to maybe help out some of the, uh, I don't want to say weaker survivors, but some of the less coordinated survivors? Um, oh, that's a big one. Because um, I know that's a, that's a very contentious point with her and Pinhead. I feel like... Mm, I have to think about that one a little bit. Um, the way she currently is, ah, man, I almost feel like if survivors are holding a tape, it could block the passive condemn from going up, like the the mini global condemn that's on individual TVs that you get if you're near it if she teleports somewhere. I almost feel like tapes could stop that to help players not get immediately condemned because she's spamming. I'm not entirely sure on that change, though. I just thought about it. Um, I think tapes are mostly in a good spot, though. Only because it's really easy to insert now, and you can insert in her face basically whenever you want, because she can't stop you in any way. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than teleporting to the TV, that's the only way she can actually stop you. And if she does that, you just run. You don't try to insert. You just hold W. Um, so I think I think she's in a good spot, but I do think there could be adjustments made to her counterplay later on if it's needed. Right. Yeah. Well, because I mean, I think because I've talked about power budgets before. It's a, it's, a, it's something that uh, a lot of uh, people talk about with League characters, and because I bring up League all the time, uh, and I feel like because her anti loop isn't the best if some would even argue non-existent, pretty much. Um, mm-hmm. I think part of that that was they put a lot of her power budget into the the way the TVs are and how they influence the game as far as her lethality goes. Yeah, the thing about that, actually, I was playing some games last n- tonight with her, um, and I had someone tell me, why are you only focusing on Condemn and Endgame chat? And I was like, that's my power. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, they called me, like, they were like, oh, you're using Condemn meta, you're playing so boring, and I was like, that's my power, though. <laughs> I mean, and, like, I don't know. It's... Her, Condemn is the best part about her power, in my opinion. Like, that is how she gets her pressure. That is how she can turn games around, is if she's at, like, two gens and she doesn't have hook stages, mm-hmm. she gets a Condemn, she gets a kill, she can win now. Yeah. I think that's that's it, basically. Yeah, because I mean, like, she's, without Condemn, she's basically just, I mean, we said it earlier, but she's basically just worse Wraith. Yeah, exactly. Um, with, a, she's worse Wraith with a, with a more dependent teleport. Yep, exactly. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't, like I said, I, I, I do think they should add something to help out 
not necessarily solo queue, but just like like I said, the less coordinated people sometimes. Which no shade to anybody. I, I despise playing against Pinhead for that exact reason. But um, mm-hmm. it, it it's just like it, it feels like I don't want to say a pub stomper, but like it feels like a lot of it is 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 banking on the fact. And I know there there's ways obviously two player to kind of force it out, but banking on the fact that the survivors kind of aren't paying attention or aren't doing what they're supposed to do a lot of the times. Yeah, and the thing is, too, like, a lot of survivors are good in chase, but they aren't as good with managing, like, uh, macro gameplay. Like, Mm -hmm. I think Pinhead has that issue, and Sadako also kind of has that issue. Um, And I feel like a lot of survivors hate her only because they don't learn how to play around TVs, and they just focus on the chase aspect. So I think... I think sh- you have to play against her in a really different way, kind of like Pinhead. Uh, you know, you saying that, I think that explains a lot of the hate for a lot of different killers. Like Skull Merchant, yeah. <laughs> like, survivors don't, a lot of survivors probably don't like Mapper. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, why have I never really thought about that? I, I, they focus on one part of gameplay and then the other when it comes up and they don't know how to deal with it they're like what the hell <laughs> yeah yeah um i will say uh speaking of macro gameplay on survivors i have been saying deja vu a lot over the past couple days um i don't know what changed but dear god it, it has been nightmarish to go against uh to a degree um not because of the gen speed necessarily but because I have very rarely seen survivors like doing quote doing the wrong gens as of late. Um, yeah, they they just don't want to get three gen, I guess. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because it's not not as good as it was. But yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, what what is probably what would you say is her worst add on? If you had, if you had to pick one. Okay, let me look at her add-ons real quick, because I think I know which one, but I want to make sure. I think it's... She has actually some really weird add-ons. Um, like, Distorted Photo, for example, is a really weird one, because it causes survivors to scream when you manifest, right? But mm-hmm. the weird part about it is they have to be looking at you for them to scream. It makes no sense. Is it always uh, been like that? Yeah, it has been actually since her release. Um, oh. It's worded really weirdly, but it's uh, cause all survivors within 16 meters of your location who witness your manifestation. Oh. Yeah, so they have to actually see you demanifest to to scream. And I think it's just so weird. Um, I also think, though, she has some really bad yellow add-ons. Like, Reiko's watch is great, but uh, sea-soaked cloth is just really bad. And the funny thing about sea-soaked cloth is that Yoichi's fishing net, which is also a yellow, does something similar, but it does it ten times better. Does um does screaming interrupt them putting a tape in? Do you know? It does, yes. Okay, I think that's probably why that add-on is the way it is, then. I think so, too. It's just such, like, a situational add-on, I think. Mm-hmm. And th- that's why I don't think it's great. Um, because you could just run Face of Darkness. Yeah. yeah and sure. get better value from that than running Distorted Photo. And I think just the fact it's a purple, it's like, eh. Is there... Is there any, I, I ask this a lot, because I know a lot of... Or some killers have this uh, for Chucky. It'd be hard hat. Is there any add-ons you would say she has that make her play worse? Okay. Um, that aren't a meme add-on. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Not really. Um, I mean, I think she has some add-ons that make her play way more like brain dead, mm-hmm. like way more easy, like Mother's Comb. I think is one like that. I love Mother's Comb. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, I I liked Mother's Comb when it only showed the auras, but when they added the noise notifications to it, that's when I kind of stopped liking it because it made her too easy. I felt like. Oh, I think we're thinking of a different add-on. I, I was thinking of the one where uh, when you demanifest, uh, you like linger a bit. Oh, that's Rico's watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, yeah, I love that ad. <laughs> oh wait, no wait. Actually, that's an old newspaper. Oh my god. Ugh. 
Um, I'm getting the mixed up. <laughs> speaking of the, the that add-on, uh, can I just say, can they add the effect that Sadako has to Spirit for the phasing part? I agree. Uh... Um, you know what I'm talking about, where like when like her hands actually phase, like in the first person perspective. I had a friend say that same thing actually before, and I never thought about that. But that's an interesting idea. Well, because Spirit has um a couple add-ons that make that happen more often. Yeah, um, and you can't really use it. Well, you can. I run it all the time, but like it's one of those things where I don't know if it worked. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, there's no way for me to like actually play around it. You know what I mean? That's that's what I meant. I meant like you can't use it in a way where you can like kind of you can't like fully mind game with it. Like, yeah, if your hands were glitching in and out, you would be like, OK, I can try something here. Yeah, that those add ons kind of seem like, OK, if you do happen to flicker here, you get value from it type of thing. Yeah, it, it's 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 another case of the and I talk I bring this up a lot. It's a case of. uh it's a case of, of something that it works, but it gives you no feedback that it did. Yeah. Um, so, like, you can run it. You might get a hit with it, but you'll never know. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can guess, but you'll never know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really... And it, I mean, I know their, their spirit was basically, quote, their version of uh, Ringu to a degree. Um, I of. feel like... I feel like Spirit's kind of like she's kind of a combination of Ringu and Grudge a little bit mm -hmm. with their own twist on her. Yeah. Because I mean like she has like Grudge vibes but her backstory does remind me of Sadako a little bit so I think they kind of combined all elements there with her. Yeah yeah and I, I think it's fine. I mean <laughs> it's not like the idea of a vengeful spirit is anything super new. unique or new yeah um, yeah <laughs> now you could argue well she's also got the the, the flowing hair and all of the and i guess but still uh <laughs> uh that, that's a that's a whole like art discussion on what what is technically plagiarism and stealing versus what's just inspiration and listen i've watched a lot of videos on this recently for a sp specific game that will go unnamed and uh yeah <laughs> I know which game you're talking about. I think about. everyone yeah. knows what game I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, at least six million people do. Uh, it, it's yeah. Uh, I I I think the twist was enough though. I I, I think because like I don't think I'd confuse Spirit for Ringu or anything, and I think I think that's the main mm. point. No, I feel like actually what they did with Spirit was pretty cool and. I think they did a good job of making Spirit like actually kind of disturbing. Like she looks disturbing, and mm -hmm. I think they did a good job with her visual design in that aspect. Yeah, because I think Sadako, um, and I, I'm almost positive this was on purpose. Uh, she looks sympathetic in a way. Yeah. Um. Uh, she. I think. Because, like, the way the original movie played out, mm -hmm. they painted her out as sympathetic, and then obviously, spoilers for anyone that hasn't watched the movie, towards the end, it's revealed that she's entirely vengeful, and she's not gonna stop killing people. <laughs> <laughs> spoilers for, like, a 40-year-old movie. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure if anyone hasn't seen Ringu by now, they're never gonna watch it. Yeah, or th or at least the American version. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Um. Yeah, but I I, I think her add-ons, though. I mean, overall, they're, they're, like she's not she's not a situation like a lot of killers where like her add-ons, like ninety percent of her add-ons are bad. No, she has a lot of good add-ons, and I actually really appreciate the fact that she has good browns and like decent some decent greens and decent yellows. Mm -hmm. Um. Because it makes new players that are picking her up a lot easier to play with because they don't have to spend as much points to get good add-ons. Like, they don't have to get eeries constantly yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and and I also commend behavior to a degree with... I, I know she's been reworked three times, and I know people didn't like the second rework that much, but uh, we can I can at least condemn, or, uh, uh, commend behavior on also changing the add-ons at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, if they had kept the add-ons the same throughout, it would have been rough. Well, it's one of those things, because I talked about this with Skull Merchant, uh, uh, Pixel brought it up, how 
they added the whole thing where like you can change the direction of the the beams mm-hmm. um but there's no add-ons that do anything about it that that is really true actually with skull merchant um they um, kind of just reworked her and they were like okay here's oh and the skill check add-ons too actually yeah. they were like here's the skill check add-ons even though she can't three gen anymore yeah actually i i got a lot of success with those if i'm being honest oh have you oh have you run like colophobia and stuff with them yeah it, it's it's funny um how many people will still do the drones even if you put them right on top of a gen oh god um, yeah like they won't get hit by them but they'll disable them <laughs> which is you're not moving so you don't whatever i'm not gonna get into that whole debate again <laughs> yeah but um, they're they're wasting time still yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh and I also feel like she's not like. Would you say she's add-on dependent? I don't really think so. No, not at um, I because with how she is now, her chase is better than it's ever been. Um, and I feel like a lot of her add-ons just make her feel better. Yeah. They don't make her. They don't make her feel like completely. Oh, now she's strong now that she has this add-on. They just make her feel better in like some aspects Mm -hmm. um i have played some games with no add-ons and no perks as her just to keep my mind fresh with her base kit and i i think she feels fine yeah and i I think it's it's a sign of in my opinion a good 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 a good killer design is if the add-ons are supplementary not necessary yeah exactly Um, i think i've said this before Pyramid Head add-ons actually aren't that bad. The problem is they focus on the wrong part of the power. Um, and I think I think Sadako is one of the lucky characters with multiple parts of her power, where there there's a few add-ons for every bit. Um, yeah, it's like it's spread across evenly. Yeah, because um, I, I I will never stop bringing this up with Pyramid Head. The fact that almost none of his add-ons affect the uh, punishment of the damned and only the trails is the most criminal thing ever. Oh god, his add-ons really need to be like looked at. <laughs> he is getting a new one. Um, not a new one, but he one is getting changed. It was shadow changed in the PT in the PTB. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, his uh, punishment of the damned will now apply uh, hemorrhage and mangled. Uh, they changed one of the purples. I forget which one it is. Oh, that's cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, more like that, please. Uh, yeah, give us give us more. <laughs> I've always had the suggestion of making one that uh, lowers how far out the the trail goes like it lowers the range but it shoots out in like a cone oh that would be cool yeah more stuff like that i want add-ons that change a power and make them more like yeah give you more variety if you bring those add-ons yeah uh yeah because like wesker has a lot of those that's true yeah uh i mean he's got class or is it lab photo and I mean, egg basically change how, changes how the power works completely. Then there's the med- medallions; they change how the power works to a degree. Um, egg is like, yeah, I I love egg on Wesker. Oh my god, such a good add on. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just I just want more add ons like that. And I don't think in so, in Sadako though being not add on dependent, I I think is a good thing. I mean, I guess we could both probably argue that Bloody Fingernail is probably a little too good, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I think Bloody Fingernail, I actually was just talking about this with a friend I was in a call with before we came on here. Mm -hmm. Um, We were talking about her in like comp, and he actually got Bloody Fingernail banned because it can guarantee hits like every single time. Mm -hmm. If the survivor's in, like, a correct position, Bloody Fingernail can just guarantee a hit at a tile. So, I think it could use an adjustment, like you suggested. I think making it, like, 40% is a good idea. Um, speaking of guaranteeing hits, uh, (laughs) EV placements. Oh, lord. Okay. (laughs) Um, okay. Before we get into this, uh, for those who don't know how the TV placements technically, quote, work... It's not a science, but for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, they try to spawn near gens where a chest would normally be. Yep, that is actually very accurate, and I have something funny to say about that. Go ahead. You know 
there's this one chest spawn on Hawkins. Mm -hmm. It spawns where a gen is sometimes. Yeah. And there there's this bug where sometimes a chest can spawn there with the gen. The chest is literally inside the gen. Well, that can happen with a Sadako TV as well. And if that happens, the TV is literally inside of the gen. And if she teleports, she's trapped inside the gen. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't, if the survivor has a tape that they need to bring to that TV, they can't insert it. <laughs> it's so stupid. You can teleport away though, right? You're not like stuck there forever. No, you can teleport away, but you can't like use it in chase yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. 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 I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh, it's fine. You can just. I'm just saying like, you're not like perma stuck there. That's that's my point. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, would you change like the spawn logic like in any way, or do you think it's fine? I I wish they would revise some of the spawns. Like, I wish they would go like go into the individual maps and maybe spread them out a little more. Mm -hmm. Because Swamp has the issue of two of them spawning directly next to each other. Eerie, too. Um, Eerie does it all yeah, the time. Eerie, yeah, Eerie, oh my god. You, there's so many times where I've had TVs just facing each other in mm -hmm. Eerie, and I'm yeah. like, well, now I have like three TVs to use all game. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, do you, would you... <laughs> Do you think there's too many TVs or too little TVs, or do you think it's a perfect amount? I I think it's perfect, the actual number of TVs. Mm -hmm. um, I think changing that would be problematic, only because if you were to increase it, I think it would make her too strong. Fair point, fair point. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I've heard the idea of maybe lowering it by one so she doesn't have so much map mobility, but I, I think it's fine. Once again, nah, yeah. Once again, I think people tend to forget she doesn't really have a chase power. I mean, what she does, I know someone's going to be the contrarian and say, "No, she does. She does, but not really." Um, like I, yeah. I like to think that her power, her like her quote unquote chase power, it's more so to be used in a way where she can mind game a survivor if she plays it right um but it's not reliable enough to be considered like a traditional chase power so it's kind of like it's kind of like her support in chase mm -hmm. more so in my opinion yeah it's it's not like um it's not like chuck spots uh, chuck spots i love yeah. chuck spots i'm making a t-shirt for that by the way um oh my god get ready for you? that everybody i gotta find i gotta i gotta find a copyright lawyer before i do it but get ready for that everybody um, not like Chuck Spots. Chuck Spots, like, b because of Chucky's short stature and his stealth, he's able to actually use it at loot sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. to not necessarily guarantee a hit, but to help him know what to do. Sadako can't really do that with her power. No, um, there is something interesting she can do. Um, and you kind of brought it up with the whole spirit thing. Mm -hmm. Um, with them kind of making Reiko's watch base kit, um, you can actually stand still for a second wait until your hands like disappear and then sort of try to mind game the survivor and just appear behind them mm -hmm. um there, there's this clip from one of my friends um we were playing on the the ptb when she first got uh her third rework and i had done that at an lt and I just appeared behind him. He didn't even see me walk past the window. <laughs> I was just behind him suddenly, and he was like, what the hell? Um, so she can do some fun stuff like that, but I wouldn't really call her power a chase power in yeah. a sense. Yeah, I mean, you can you can definitely mind game with it. Like, I've had many times when, like, I'll... I'll, I'll and a lot of times I don't even do it on purpose, but, like, I'll go left, like, before the phase starts, and then the moment the phase happens, I start going the other way, and they, they think I'm gonna cut them off left so they, they double back yeah um, that's like that's the main thing you can do with it definitely yeah and i think that definitely helps her at short loops because i think she uh not when i say short loops i don't mean trash loops i mean like height short height loops yeah um, like loops where she can like kind of break line of sight if she yeah, needs to and yeah, yeah. yeah um but yeah, so so really not too many changes you'd make to her now. You think you think that this rework did it and she's she's pretty much where she needs to be? I I think she's basically perfect, yeah. Okay, fair point. Um 
builds you run. Uh, I know in the background footage right now, uh, it is a black screen for everybody because it's in the loading screen because I didn't load it fast enough. My bad. Um, <laughs> you're running uh, what seems like a hex build uh, with bloody fingernail, yes. and uh, I'm assuming that's uh, uh, used VHS. A videotape copy, yeah. yeah so yeah. that build, in my opinion, is her is the strongest thing you can run on her. Mm -hmm. um, Pixel brought it up in the Skull Merchant uh, podcast, actually. Mm -hmm. um, that build is so strong on her only because Condemn is already like a secondary objective. Mm -hmm. So by giving them a bunch of totems to cleanse, you're making Condemn even more of a threat. And they're going to waste so much time cleansing totems that their Condemn is going to get high and they might just die to Condemn. Yeah, and I also think she's a very good user of Ruin. Uh, she's one of the few killers in the game now, I think, who uses Ruin very well. Oh, yeah, because she can just, like, keep teleporting between gens and just pushing people off. Mm -hmm. And that makes her really good. And I think also Penti is really good on her because sometimes if TV spawn near the totems, it's really easy for me to just teleport to it, set the Penti down, then teleport away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't have to waste time walking to it, yeah. Is there any variation, say the best for last, or Bamboozle, or anything like that? Or is this typically... What Bamboozle's not bad on her, I don't think. Um, say the best for last isn't horrible on her either. Um, if I'm running, like, kind of a chase build, I like to run Game of Foot and play with your food. Um, yeah. That's kind of... That's a combo I like to run sometimes. Yeah, she's very um, good with play with your food. Um, yeah. I, I love like getting three stacks and then someone gets condemned and I'm just like flying towards them. With yeah, them. It's, did, it's funny. <laughs> I did. I did my video talking about how play with your food is a badly designed perk. Um, and people were talking about how killers will just like moonwalk away from the obsession, which isn't what you should be doing with play with your food. But I think Sadako is the one exception because she can start the chase and then teleport. And then she just gains a stack yeah. instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Most killers who run play with your food, how you're, quote, supposed to use it is you, um, it just kind of happens. You're not supposed mm -hmm. to, like, go out of your way because you're going to waste so much time doing that. But once again, Sadako is the exception. Yeah. Um, uh, what about, I also, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I also like to run, uh, End Fury on her sometimes, too. Mm -hmm. Um, because what you can do is because she can't be stunned while she's demanifested, you can hide your End Fury. So they won't expect you to swing through a pallet randomly and break it. Mm -hmm. So that's something I, I like to do on her, too. Uh, what about Koo? Koo is a good one, too. Yeah, Koo is really good with Bloody Finger now. Yeah, and we, we, we talked a little bit about this before stream, but um, uh, you might start running uh, <laughs> Blood Favor soon. <laughs> Just, yeah, I think Blood Favor might be kind of fun to run on her. I don't think it'll be, like, that great. I think crowd control is better, mm -hmm. but I think Blood Favor would be fun with the hex build. Yeah, and Sadako is, uh, quote, a privileged killer because she uh, she's an M1 killer with teleportation, and, like, her power doesn't really do anything, like, to affect the survivors as far as, like, health states or whatever. So she, mm -hmm. uh, she can pretty much run whatever she wants. I I love that about her. Oh, Discordance too. I love Discordance mm -hmm. on her. Discordance is really good on her. I think I think Discordance is a perk everyone forgot existed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because there's so many gen perks in the game now. I think that's why. Well, yeah, but uh, you know, people complain about distortion all the time. Like, just run Discordance or Thrilling Tremors. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it won't show you exact locations, but it'll help. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's another thing, too, uh, with her power. Um, I really like to use TVs to track people. Um, sometimes if, like, if someone turns off a TV and I realize that there was a TV on over there, I'll go to that area and I'll find someone random. So I like her in that sense, too, with, like, distortion and hiding because yeah. she can kind of do something about it. Gotcha. Um, speaking of that... Uh... State of the game overall. So this is kind of going away from, from Sadako as the main topic, but how how would you say overall the game is at the moment? And I think... Mm, sorry, for, mm. for context, for people listening to this, uh, I will date this real quick. We're recording this before uh, All Things Wicked comes out, but it's after the PTB has been out for a little while. I think the game right now... 
is in actually a pretty decent spot, to be honest. Um, Because comparing it to, like, let's say two years ago, even with Boons and etc., I feel like there's a lot less to worry about on both sides now. Um, I feel like there's a lot less unhealthy stuff in the game. I mean, there's still unhealthy stuff. There's for the people buckle up and etc. But I feel like compared to what it was like three, two years ago, I think the game is in mostly a pretty decent spot. Yeah, yeah, I say this almost every time. I, I do too. I just think people are complaining to complain most of the time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, there's still the outliers. There always will be. Um, it's, it's every game in the world. Uh, and if people are really... and I, I, I'm, I'm working on a whole fucking discussion video on this, but if people are really, 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 really mad about, oh, the meta is so stale, be the change you want to be and stop running the meta. Yeah, exactly. Like, people complain also about, like people playing like Wesker playing mm -hmm. the popular killers, but like they never go on killer and play and play the less popular ones. Right. So it's like they complain, but they don't ever do anything about it themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I, you know, to my points of like, if you don't like the meta, don't run the meta. It's like, well then the other people will still run the meta. Yeah. But, but it, it's, it's always been this like cold war situation of like an arms race. I'm running meta because they run meta. If you are that one change in someone who doesn't run the meta and more people start to do it, eventually it's a domino effect. And I know I'm not going to convince the entire community. No one will. We can't change mm -hmm. an entire community sentiment. But like, yeah, you're going to lose some with it, obviously. But just take it in stride. Keep going. And just like when I play Survivor, I <laughs> I don't play Survivor or didn't play Survivor that much before one particular perk came out. Uh, and that is a uh, uh, champion of light. Ooh. Champion of light combined with uh, self aware, fixated, or whatever it's called now, um, is one of my favorite things in this fucking game. It, I I have instantly doubled my survivor time in the past, since Alan Wake came out alone because of this perk. It is a really fun perk. Um, they. Behavior cooked with that with Alan Wake's perks mostly. Yeah, I say mostly because the boon exists. But <laughs> sp sp speaking of the, have you seen my video talking about my changes for the boon? I think I did, but I think I saw it a little bit ago, so I don't remember. Didn't you say like there's more aura rating to it? I think for yeah. all survivors. Yeah, I think at the very least, I th and some people were saying this would like kill hexes, but I think it should show uh, totem spawns or totem locations. I think that would be really cool. Um, I like I said, people were like, "Oh, that would just make it so hexes are useless." Maps exist. Yeah, and also, <laughs> you're still using a perk slot for a boon. Yeah, and you're you're still taking time to set the boon down to mm -hmm. find the hexes. So it, I, I don't think that would kill hexes at all. Yeah. And once again, maps exist. Detectives. Yeah. If that was as powerful as people are saying it is, detectives' hunch would be one of the most meta perks in the game. I, I people forget that perk even exists. That's what I'm saying. Like, like that, that's why <laughs> that argument. Like, I get where they're coming from. Like, you know, if I bring a full hex build and they bring this perk, then like it completely destroys it. Tough luck, Buttercup. That's just how it goes. <laughs> like, like with my uh, my Sadako hex build, I've actually had people bring like boons and they bring stuff like Detective's Hunch, and mm -hmm. I actually find it fun because it's like juggling between the totems. Yeah, and I, I I find that fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's you're juggling between the totems. You're still trying to watch the gens. You're still trying to like in Sadako's case, you know, keep track of Kundam, where the TVs are. Like, yeah, I, I think it's fine. Like, I don't understand why so many people hated that idea. Uh, I I think they're just scared of their of their uh ruin going two sec two seconds into the match. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. It's like nine times out of ten, people spawn on the totem anyways. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> um because my idea with that is because because it has a it's one of the only boons i think it is the only boon with a secondary effect uh where if you re if you have a boon lit and you're lighting another one you do it faster oh yeah that's true so it like, does have a secondary effect so like to me like it's showing you totem spawns makes so much sense <laughs> 
That actually, yeah, I th- I feel like they should just do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense that it doesn't do that already. <laughs> like, 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 I also said it should show Survivor auras. That I might think, like, maybe might be too strong, but whatever. Um, uh, Circle of Healing kind of does that. If you're in the ring, it shows you uh, your teammates, your aura, but yeah um but yeah i don't i don't think it would be too bad plus i think it would i know boons are a contentious thing and people don't want to buff them too much but i think we need to start making boons better not good See, but better like i feel like the reason boons were so hated back in like 2021 is because circle of healing was just overtuned and that's it like yeah that that was it shadow step wasn't even that great yeah just it was just circle of healing and ever since then boons really haven't been a problem yeah um it's just really funny because shattered hope exists um, oh god yeah <laughs> uh, jesus christ if there was ever a moment when i'm like yeah behavior just did this for a band-aid fix um but like oh, shattered hope. <laughs> uh hashtag make shattered hope base kit i i forget it exists now because i never need like think about bringing it Oh god, I, I, it like I knew it existed, but I always like store it away in my mind, and then when it's brought up, I'm like, oh yeah, that perk. I brought it. I, I, yeah. (laughs) I brought it a couple times, and it has tripped people up when it happens because people forget it exists and uh, don't remember that it also shows your aura when I stuff it. That I do forget about that too, actually. Um, so I've actually like snuffed a boon and like or gotten downs because people are like hiding nearby. (laughs) That's so funny. Um, also, PSA, uh, Friends to the End shows your aura. Uh, just letting people know that because I, for some reason, get people still thinking they can hide. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Friends to the End, actually. I, I like to run that on Sadako. Yeah, you know, I didn't even think about that. It, it, she's probably one of the better users of it. Uh, it's kind it, of like Dredge. Yeah, you could just teleport to where they are and mm-hmm. instant down them. Yeah. It's it's a fun perk to run on her. Yeah, I, I like Friends to the End. I think Friends to the End is one of the probably the better Chucky perk that came out. Oh, yeah. I think it's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, What was I even just talking about? Oh, Boons. Uh, Yeah, because it's like when uh, Exponential got announced. I remember people were freaking out and thinking it was going to be, like, super good. And, like, I I don't know what world these people are living in, but, like, it's not good. The thing is, Unbreakable's there. Yeah, on top of that, it's, like, the only time, like, it's only good on, like, multi-floor maps. Yeah. Um, because if you go down near a boon with with Exponential, uh, the killer's probably gonna snuff the boon first and then pick you up. Yeah, like, I mean, there I've had so many, like, situations where I am against Exponential, I just walk over and snuff it. It's really not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. And... Sometimes what I'll do is I'll make like a mental note of where the totem is so I can go back over there at some point and see if I can catch somebody trying to set it down, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and then Shadow Step, I actually think, is really underrated. Shadow Step, actually, I think, can really trip killers up sometimes. I, I, they're like, I think some people forget that. And it's the reason why distort or part of the reason distortion is so hated, uh, because a lot of killers I don't want to like I I'm I'm guilty of this sometimes, especially when I'm playing off stream. I am very unga boonga follow aura gamer, um, <laughs> especially with barbecue and chili. Shadow Step completely like, can completely negate barbecue and chili. Yeah, Shadow Step is underrated for sure. I actually um this is gonna get me so much hate, but I actually like running distortion sometimes, mm-hmm. and that's only because um. So many killers run lethal, and I think denying them a lot of their aura is really good. Um, it's just you have to play aggressive still, even if you have distortion. Uh, wh- it's wh- uh, no, keep going, keep going. I I feel like you should hide when you when you need to, but you should still also take aggro for teammates. You shouldn't hide like the entire game, is what I mean. If you have it, yeah, it, it's one of those things. Um, because whenever, because I've I've gotten so many um. Because I, I talk about design a lot uh, whenever I'm bringing mm-hmm. up killers and perks. And I think people misunderstand what I mean when I say, like, good or bad design. It has nothing to do with the strength of something or the weakness of something. It's, like, what what it encourages you to do. Um, and I think Distortion is an example of a perk that 
Like, it can be used aggressively, and it probably should be, but because of how it works, it kind of encourages you to use it in, you know, the way a lot of people do. Yeah, and I think letting stacks recharge through being chased would fix that. Um, for the most part. I, I yeah. <laughs> my, my suge- I still, I will die on the hill of my suggestion where you start off with three stacks, and you lose your stack. Once you lose your stacks, you only get them back when you're unhooked. Oh, that would be interesting too, actually. Because yeah. it means you can hide, you know, for those first three, and then you will eventually be found, and then you get three more, and then, you know, you can't hide the whole game. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I actually played a Sadako game recently on Midwitch, um, where one of their teammates had calm spirit distortion Mm -hmm. uh i think they had shadow step too actually i can't remember the full build but i didn't see that person all game all three of their teammates died to condemn at like four gens and they just got hatched because they had a key i was was left behind (laughs) i was i was playing midwitch chucky a couple days ago and there was a claudette um there's a claudette on uh the top floor uh, doing a gen. Every time I came by to you know, check the gen, there was no one nearby, no scratch marks. So I looked in the locker. It was her. I got her. Put her on a hook. Um, I went to go chase somebody else. Came back. The gen wasn't done. And I was like, huh. She wouldn't hide in the same locker twice, would she? She she hid in the same locker twice. Um, she just let her teammates die, pretty much. Oh, God. She didn't take chase the entire time. She just hid in lockers and you know, let distortion do its thing. Um, yeah, and it got to a point where I, I I rewatched the footage. I didn't even notice her teammates were trying to tell me where she was. Oh no! <laughs> um, you know, a lot of times I will. Uh, depending, it depends on the situation, obviously. Um, if there's two people left and one of them is hiding in a corner, and the other person shows me where they are, I will kill the person that was hiding. Um, and let yeah. the person who showed me go away. Normally, if you rat your teammates out, no, you're you're dead. Um, not, not the teammate, the person who, who ratted them out is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, but in a situation like that, I felt bad because I was like, man, I went after the wrong person. Um, yeah, I yeah, I get that because sometimes I, I do feel bad for the person that got ratted out. Like if they weren't hiding all game and the other person's just being a jerk, I'll often yeah. hook the person that ratted them out too. It's just a situation yeah. thing, I think. Well, because I mean, I like to call it <laughs> When there's two people alive and there's like three gens left, I think is the worst time in this game. Oh, yeah, I agree with um, that. And I like all because the survivors are like, fuck, and they just hide because they know they can't do any of the gens. Um, and they know once I find one of them, I'm probably going to find the other one or at least one of them. One of them is dead. Um, so they both mm-hmm. just hide the whole match. And that's fine. I get that. But if there is, like, one gen left, everyone's on death hook. Um, or let's say you haven't been hooked the whole match, your entire team is on death hook, and you're still hiding in a corner. Um, maybe don't do that. Yeah, I, I've actually had that happen so many times on Dead Dog. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it happens so much on Dead Dog. The bushes. But, yeah, I think it's the bushes. Um. I remember I had like a 30 minute match because the Meg and this other person were just, they were hiding the entire time. And once I finally killed their other two teammates, I just, I didn't find them for 20 more minutes until I finally found them in corners. I I think I was playing Chucky. I think people forget that like, yes, killers can hold people hostage. They can. Technically speaking, the survivors could do it too. Like, yeah. All they have to do is like if they if they if they really really want to, they could just hide in lockers the entire match and like keep constantly moving when the killer is away, and I guarantee you you could make that match an hour long. Yeah, absolutely. You can. Um I don't think anyone's out there doing it. At least I fucking hope not. Uh but <laughs> they could. Uh and, and I I think it's 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 something I think people tend to forget as far as like when there's only two people left, I'm not saying just, like, throw yourself at the killer. But, no. man, like, is it really worth wasting, like, an hour of all of our time, all three of us, because you don't want to die? 
See, yeah, like, in that type of situation, the way I see it as a survivor, I'm like, okay, I'll try to hide, and then eventually, if I do get seen, fine, and if I do die, the person can look for Hatch. Like, I'm not purposely trying to keep the game hostage, it's just mm-hmm. maybe try to live a little longer for more points, maybe. Yeah. Um, at but least, I think... At least try to yeah. do it, Jen. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, don't just, like, literally, like, both of you just go in a corner, you know what I mean? Like... Yeah, like if they're being chased, I'm I'm gonna do a gen still because points. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's just it's such it's so strange to me. I, I don't know because people complain about oh matches take too long, and it's like well, then <laughs> that happens. It's like okay, well, all right. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. It's such a it's such a weird argument that people make with that for my, sure. My suggestion has always been if there hasn't been a chase in ten minutes that, like, crows should spawn, like, or, like, a, a, a noise notification should happen near the survivors or something. And, like, yeah, maybe their aura could be shown or something for like, like a, that. For, yeah. like, a second. Nothing, like, game-breaking, but just enough so the game can actually be played. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually really want to change like that. Um, Because I don't think that would be super overpowered or anything. <laughs> no, because that would that would actually, like, fix those scenarios where two people are hiding and the killer can't find anybody. Mm-hmm. This is entirely off topic, but I think it's kind of funny that we're filming this episode on the two year anniversary of Sadako Rising. Wait, is that today? Yeah, that's oh. today. What, the ninth or the eighth? Oh, it technically it's, it's the eighth, okay. but we are filming it like within that time range, which is wow. funny. Skull Merchant's, uh, Skull Merchant's uh, birthday was yesterday. So, yeah. I yeah. I, I, we just dated this like four times. Let's go. Uh,. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I actually prefer to date these because it it helps with context when someone's like, "Um, that's not how that works. It's how it did." Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I think it was funny. I recorded the Demogorgon one uh, the day before the PTP went. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they didn't change anything that much on Demogorgon, sadly. Uh, so it didn't really affect anything. But it was really funny mm-hmm. because uh, you know, Jackie came in with like all of these change ideas. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, because I forgot the PTV had the demo stuff. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Jackie came with all these change ideas and demo basically got nothing. <laughs> oh, man. Demo got one change. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for Jackie because we made we did the, the review of the patch too with him on there. And uh, oh, man, and we made fun of him the whole time. I felt kind of bad. <laughs> I, I actually watched that, yeah. I, I felt bad. <laughs> it was a good fun, alright? It was all a good fun. Wasn't oh, it? man. Poor demo. <laughs> <laughs> um, So this is going to be a hotly contested uh, I, uh, question, I feel. Mm. Sadako's power level. Mm. Um, Because I feel this is one of the few, one, I don't want to say the few killers, but one of those killers where it really does depend on who you ask, and there's no like general consensus. So, okay, in my opinion, it depends on how good the Sadako player actually is. Um, if they don't fully understand how to utilize Condemn, mm-hmm. I would say she's like she's like low tier. But if they know what they're doing, she is B tier in my opinion. There. I would I would say like higher B tier. Would um I always ask this to kind of give relativity to it. Uh who would you put right above her and who would you put right under her if you had Oh to? man. D- directly <laughs> above her and directly under her. Oh, let me I have to go look at the killer list. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of all of them on the professionals, top of everybody. Professionals. So okay, uh, I'm gonna look at odds oh, tier list actually. The, the amount of times I, um, because I had to find people for this, the amount of times I look through my list and there are so many killers that I still haven't gotten to yet, where I'm like, oh right, I have to find one of those, and because I forgot the killer existed. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Oh man. I don't fully know, actually. Um, that's a hard question. I feel like she's like. I feel like she's stronger than Nemesis. I would put Nemesis like lower than her, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would put someone like. 
demo higher, I think. I think that's my answer. Okay. Nemesis okay. behind her and demo higher than her. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so she's like mid midish. Mid, yeah, mid tier. Okay. Around that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I I always ask that because, you know, I could sit here and say Chucky's A tier, right? And then there's no context around saying that. Like what does that actually mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um so so like saying like, well, I'd put him under spirit and above uh damn uh uh above like huntress like i i think that like that was just an example like i'm not i don't actually mean that I'm probably above plague or something like, yeah like more detail yeah in terms of like the tiers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well because there's, there's, there's a reason i don't do tier lists um one the one i the one i did was terrible and i'm aware of that it's probably my worst video i've ever done uh two I, like apart from like the top and the bottom like because the top, the top tiers, Blight and Nurse, mm-hmm. everyone is in agreement. The bottom tier is where it gets a little different, but for the most part, it's Freddie Myers and Trapper. Yeah. Um, and then the middle is when it gets a little complicated. But even then, it's like a lot of that comes out to bias, personal opinion, and uh, whether or not you're like counting add-ons and stuff. Because that was the other problem. I was counting add-ons, which made tearing myers a fucking nightmare <laughs> um oh god yeah yeah tombstone well because someone asked they're like why don't most people uh take add-ons into account and i was like because myers exists that's just like the main reason he's gonna be like s tier with tombstone <laughs> i wouldn't put him in s tier with tombstone no i wouldn't be, either yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is like like it's like okay do you when when you're tearing like myers like do you count only tombstone or do you like well they could run this you know what i mean like yeah that that's the problem with it uh because it's very hard to get a consistent rating with which like add-ons mm. in. it add-ons make it way more complicated than it already is for sure yeah like like huntress is probably like mid mid low a tier um unless you throw an iridescent hatchet then she's probably at the top of a tier um, and then like also uh her like wind up speed too and stuff like that mm. that makes her so much stronger too yeah uh, and I mean, there's some killers that basically need add-ons to function. Cough, cough, twins. Um, oh man, <laughs> I okay. So I am like kind of a twins player on the side. Mm-hmm. Please make toy sword base baby. <laughs> please, please. I don't even play twins, and I want it basically. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't wait. I, once again, not going to reveal who it is uh, for the twins episode. Um, I feel like if anyone's in the Dead by Daylight space, they know who it is. I like it's not really a secret, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion. I also I'm hope, excited for that one. Yeah, yeah. I also hope I don't get screwed over and behavior releases the rework before I record it. Oh no! <laughs> I really hope I have enough time. Um, well, let's let's hope they don't delay the rework by another two years. Oh dear God! Uh, I'm going to mention this during it. I, I think part of something they're going to do is make it, uh, they're going to take the whole Chucky thing of uh, the pickup animation, and they're going to add that to Twins. I agree with that, yeah. I, th- I think that's one thing they're going to do. Um, because I, I think that would just, he- like, I don't think that would help. And I, I hope it's optional, obviously. Like, I don't hope it's a situation where, like, Victor down somebody and you instantly pick up or something like that. Oh, God, that would be horrible if they did that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> There's one thing people hate in video games more than anything in the world, and that is forcing them to do something. Uh, that kind of reminds me, like, I mentioned earlier how I think cooldowns make Sadako feel really clunky. Mm-hmm. And, like, when they made Condemn have a cooldown when teleporting between TVs, I kind of felt like that. I was like, great, I can't get pr- my the pressure that I want to get because behavior decided, you want to use your power? Well, screw you. You you have a 10-second cooldown. <laughs> I, 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 played, uh, I played VHS a lot. Oh, I did too, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I think that was the number one criticism with playing Monster is the cooldowns were too fucking long. Werewolf's cooldowns? Yeah, oh, dude, I remember God. that. Because well, a lot of times, because, you know, the killers are basically the same at base, I want, or the monsters, I'm sorry, uh, are basically all the same at base. Mm-hmm. So when your stuff was on cooldown, you just kind of felt like you couldn't do anything. Oh, God, yeah. Um. 
yeah, I, I think that was once again game. If if video game players hate anything more than 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 anything, it is not having options and being forced to do something. Yeah, that's that's how cooldowns made Sadako feel. Mm-hmm. It's it's rough. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad they reverted that. Holy crap! Well, you know, once again, going back to like this whole thing where I talk about like killer design, um. Part of it often comes down to because I talk about like what were the developer's intentions for how you're supposed to play this character, and people are like, "Well, you don't know what their intentions were." I don't. I never mm-hmm. claimed that I did, but I can get an idea for what they were going for based on how you're rewarded and how you're punished for doing certain things. For Sadako, for example, and it probably wasn't intentional, but because of how her cooldowns were it kind of encouraged you uh, to play in the more condemny, sluggy way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because the TV cooldowns were ridiculous. That yeah. I got when TVs were off for like 160 seconds. It was something like that. Um, that it made teleporting with her just feel way more punishing than it should have been. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah, yeah, and you know, like with Chucky, it's like they got rid of his 180s, and people are complaining about Scamper. I mean, they were they were before, but um, it's because why would someone go? I mean, I do it, but why would someone go for a, a slice and dice hit that might miss when they can just press two buttons, Scamper under the pallet, and get the hit? You know what I mean? Yeah, so, Chucky. I feel like. Because he's also 110, mm-hmm. so if you miss that slice and dice, you have to haul your ass back towards them as a 110 with a 20 second cooldown. Mm-hmm. I think Chucky definitely suffers from that too. Yeah, and Big I'm not, time. Yeah, and I'm not gonna sit here and say he's a bad killer because he's not. But uh, you know, it's it's a situation of like they want to encourage something, you have to like reward it. What is the reward for landing a slice and dice? Yeah. Um. And especially if they're healthy, I, I'm working on the Chucky God still. And that's one of my biggest notes I give a lot of people. If you can help it, do not hit a healthy survivor with slice and dice. Yeah, you want to like M1 them then, then go set, into your power. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're not going to hit them with the second slice and dice, you're going to catch up. Yeah. And that's that's the main thing, main takeaway with it. Um. Yeah, because if anything, you're actually... The only thing you really gain there is like your cooldown starts sooner, um, which actually isn't true, by the way, because I only learned this recently. Did you know that Chucky's cooldown starts the moment the dash starts? I did not know that. No. Yeah. So it's not actually 20 seconds. So it's more like 18 or, or 18. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the, the slice and dice distance is a I, I don't have an exact number because we can never really get that. It's a about 12 and a half meters. Yeah. Um, I only know that because I was trying to test doll eyes once and uh, it did not work how I thought it did. And I realized, yeah, the slice and dice is 12 and a half meters. Um, and jump rope adds a meter to it, give or take. Uh, but yeah, it, it's yeah. The, the cooldown starts the moment the slice and dice happens. So if you go through the full the full like dash, it, it um, it's more about 18 seconds. That's interesting. Yeah. There's a lot of powers like that. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, Spirits is weird, too, like that. Because uh, once you stop it, there's like a delay before the cooldown starts. Oh, that reminds me, actually. There is something weird about Sadako in that way, too. Mm-hmm. Um, It's kind of different, like, different in comparison to that. But it, I really wish they would change it. If you accidentally tap your de-manifest button while you're not in your power, mm-hmm. you can't M1 for like two seconds. That is... Yeah, that's something on a lot of killers. Clown is very similar. If you raise your bottle, not even throw it, uh, you can't M1. I think it's for like 1.5 seconds. And like all it takes is one tiny like misclick of M2 mm-hmm. for her to do that. And it's... Oh, God, I hate it. Yeah. It... There are times where, like, I'll teleport and then I'm getting ready to hit them and I accidentally press M2 and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you look like an awkward person when you like you're, you're like like right up next to the window and they're like, looking at you like, why didn't you hit me? 
Um, yeah, or like, <laughs> or I still get the hit, but I'm like waiting those two seconds in their face to hit them. So it's just kind of like, <laughs> are you going to hit me or what's going on here? No, I'm just waiting on Dead Hard. All right. Just waiting exactly. On um, <laughs> speaking of Dead Hard, I know, I know we kind of talked about the state of the game. Have you been seeing Dead Hard more often lately? Not really. I've actually been seeing Sprint Burst more. I feel like I have been seeing Dead Hard like every other match. I had two sprint bursts. Uh, the game I played before we came on, actually. <laughs> I honestly um, don't mind sprint burst. I hate life. I think life is getting on my nerves recently. Oh, life? Yeah, because life, like, they can make a horrible play, then they just fall something, and then they hold W. It's it, like, oh. It's not even just that. I hate the, like, I don't know if it's iframes or if they just get, like, distance when they vault. Um, a lot of times, like, especially as Chucky, I'll, like, mind game a pallet. Like the right way, quote unquote, I'll mind game it, but the mm-hmm. life, and then I'll fucking miss because they're. Oh yeah, and like your camera still auto aims onto them, uh-huh. but you didn't get the hit. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, that that has been getting on my nerves lately. That gets on my nerves with sprint burst too sometimes because they like completely miss time it, and you still don't get the hit. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it wouldn't bother me so much with Chucky except for um. If slice and dice is on cooldown for whatever reason, or that M1 put it on cooldown, um, I can't mm-hmm. catch up. <laughs> I I think the reason I hate sprint burst more for Sadako is because if I do like if I try to sneak up on somebody on a gen, or like I try to cut them off of a TV, they just get a bunch of distance. So I it's harder for me to catch up to them. I think it's mainly because she's a stealth killer that sprint burst is just annoying. Yeah. Um so the, the spine chill changed a little while ago. Was she around for old spine chill? I don't remember. Yes, she was around for a little bit, I think. Because yeah. wasn't that change? That change was in 2022, I think, right? Yeah, it was uh, 6.1. So it would have been yeah 2022. That, that was around when Dredge came out, I think. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, yeah. So she was around for a couple of months then during old spine chill. Yeah, it's I, I feel like I know a lot of people don't like the new spine chill change um, for some for good reasons some for not so good reasons uh Mm -hmm. but uh i i am glad that we don't live in a world where spine chill still does what it did because oh god yeah sadako and chucky would be fucking miserable if it still existed like it did because like the thing is too is Sadako, she isn't entirely like fully stealthy either she has a lullaby while she's demanifested so survivors still get a warning that she's coming, uh-huh. but old spine chill that just would make her entirely just oh well she's coming towards me start running. <laughs> you know I never even thought about this. How does spine chill work with Chucky's camp? That is a really good question. Does it? Does it? Is it like but, the, the whole field of view? I would hope not. Also, that's another thing. How does spine chill work with a new field of view now? Oh god, these are questions that I need answers to. I now. never even thought about these things. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh <laughs> No one runs it anymore, so we haven't gotten yeah, the answers. Like I don't really know. Maybe I may maybe 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 Spongel actually counters Chuck spots. Oh shit. Well, this is the new meta, and no, I'm kidding. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, once again, working on the guide and uh I don't want to talk about Chucky the whole time, but uh if you want to counter Chucky, I bring this up all the time. Fucking stop moving in the loops. Um, don't pre-drop pallets and run dead hard. Boom, you just countered him. If you don't like dead hard and think it's too hard to hit, fine. Run overcome. Trust me. Over- oh yeah, overcome. Run fucking overcome. And every Chucky player you go against will hate you forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the shrine right now when we're recording this, so probably not anymore. But get that, rem- it. <laughs> that reminds me, actually, when going against Sadako, um, a mistake I notice survivors make a lot is they just don't save pallets. Um, they will let her just eat through pallets with her demanifest, mm-hmm. and they should not do that because I've had so many games where all the fillers are gone, someone gets condemned, they have nothing to work with, and they just die. I think survivors do that for a lot of killers. Yeah, I just use Sadako as an example yeah. just because she can't get stunned while demanifested. Mm-hmm. So they kind of are just handing it to her for free. I I have um I don't play with a Swift very often, but uh the 
when I do. Um, one thing we all agree on is don't drop any pallets until you're on death hook. That's fair, honestly. You would be surprised how well that strategy works. Just like greet everything, and the, it's like they're gonna think you're gonna drop it, but you don't. <laughs> well, on top of that, how many times when you're playing killer are you like, okay, I didn't get some, I didn't get them, but I got this pallet out of the way. I think that way all the time at Sadako. Like, I will sometimes, like, teleport and tag between targets, and if they just keep dropping shit, I'm like, I'm happy with this. This is helping me for later on. Yeah, so if you don't drop any pallets till death hook, you're basically, you're, you, you're, you're making it so that late game situation where the killer is usually the strongest, um, is just null and void. <laughs> yeah, and then you have, like, all the god pallets still, so you're... You have so much to work with at that point. Yeah, I mean, pe people people do it for uh, what's it called for uh, shack pallet, obviously. But like, I'm I'm serious. I'm telling this to every survivor player: stop dropping pallets until death hook. Like, that... for, for you would be surprised how well it works, and you will infuriate the killer. <laughs> uh, I might have to give that a try. To be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Like, I need to get, like, a full swift and just, we never drop anything. You I know, need to no, try that. Yep. And, and a lot of killers respect. Um, That's true. A lot of killers respect. Even even me. I mean, I'll vet for a couple for a couple loops to figure it out, but a lot, they will respect on the first couple, I promise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's, yeah, it's it's really fucking, it's really funny. It's one of those things where I feel like it's, it's like, not, nothing revolutionary, because I'm sure good players do that, too, but, um. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just I, I feel like I go against so many survivors that just pre drop, pre drop, pre drop, pre drop. It's like, dude, yeah. dude, like you're hurting your team later. Like that's all you're doing. Yeah, and that that's why I also always bring up Sadako because they have to remember that condemn is a thing. Mm -hmm. So if they're not giving their teammates any resources to work with for when the condemn happens, they are screwing them over in so many ways that they cannot even imagine. And it's always the Megs. <laughs> Why is it always the Megs that pre-drop? I swear. So, um, it's actually really funny. I don't know if this is the main reason, but uh, me and Mr. Headache were talking about this. Uh, the tutorial of the game doesn't tell you you can stun the killer with a pallet. That is so weird. Uh, so part of us thinks that, especially for people who like aren't in the uh, DVD content space, which is more people than I think people think, uh, they that's why they pre-drop so much yeah that that actually makes a lot of sense because the tutorial i feel like is so disconnected from what the actual game is well, like they don't teach like enough <laughs> it doesn't mention the anti-face camp no it needs to be updated for sure mm -hmm. i mean it, it's it's funny i've been in a lot of gaming communities i've been in rainbow six overwatch um League of Legends, uh, a lot of these live service game games, and almost every one of them has that same problem. Yeah, and I don't understand why it's so common for tutorials to just be bad for multiplayer games. I don't know. It's it, it really is weird. It, it's not even that they're bad. It's just they never get updated. They, it's like the developers put them in the game and then they're like, okay, we forget that exists now. We're gonna never touch it again. Yeah, and a lot of those games are much better about it, by the way, for someone who's typing that long paragraph now. Um, <laughs> and Overwatch <laughs> is probably the best example of a game that this tutorial is fine because it teaches you basically everything you need to know. Yeah. like The game hasn't fundamentally changed in a way where they need to add much. I, I feel like DVD tried to give players a space to, like, try killers out with, like, kill your friends, for example, mm -hmm. with bots. But bots are so, like, they don't play, like, actual players. So I feel like DVD does really lack I, a, a good space for players to learn stuff. I despise playing against oh yeah. me too me too because they're so like they're so weird what are they doing like well it's not even that they have wall hacks you can't mind the game then. no and oh my god it's sadako it drives me well, crazy once again we both play killers that are very dependent on mind gaming people <laughs> yeah chucky and sadako <laughs> like 
like so like whatever like ch- playing Chucky against a bot is one of the most infuriating things in this game. Um oh, God, because you're yeah. 110 <laughs> and they just they know where you are so you can't like position slice and dice right and mm-hmm. uh, oh and they mm. dodge slice and dice almost every time too. Oh yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, same with like Death Slinger, they perf- they almost always perfectly dodge the shots. That reminds me I remember trying unknown on the PTB against bots and they oh, were dodging oh, every single my shot. God. Yeah. I I was I remember I was trying that and I was like, behavior can like during like test servers, can you just like make the bots dumber, please? Because, yeah, because because I was playing it I was playing unknown against bots and I was like, wow, I can't I, I must suck with this power. I can't hit anybody. Um, that's how I felt too. And then I went into a normal game and I was doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was like what was I don't I don't know I don't know like it, I don't know bots are ugh. It, it was like pixel perfect dodging for them and I get it it's a robot I get that but man give me some leeway <laughs> I think also giving the bots more like customization would be nice and kill your friends yeah for sure um like I always wish they could let us like make the bots just stand still or something so they don't don't do gens and we can just test shit out without worrying about gens going <laughs> well yeah i mean like having like a um, a fighting game tutorial room would be great yeah um i don't think it would be that hard to like it doesn't have to be fancy it could literally just be a white room <laughs> like yeah like like the base plate type room that a lot of games have for that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. Um tips tips for new Sadika players. And when I say new, I don't mean uh Johnny over there who just bought Dead by Daylight and is like, yo, it's Ringu, even though they probably have no idea who that is. Um I mean uh you know I played like a a few a few hours, like fifty to two hundred or so and I'm like, you know what, I really want to start getting good at Sadako. Any suggestions for them? So, okay, so my suggestion for them is really with her, keep a mental note of where TVs are. Um, That is kind of a big one, but I think, because I mentioned earlier that I I like to use TVs to track people. Mm -hmm. So if you keep a mental note of where TVs are, you can kind of use that as a way to okay so i know someone's over here i can teleport to a different tv get their condemn up and i think just developing your micro skills is really important with playing her um i also think if you're new to playing her um add-on wise you probably should stay away from add-ons like videotape copy that extend like the condemn range or you also probably could use remote control if you really wanted to. Um, remote control kind of helps with learning how survivors path with TVs. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think new Sadaka players should not, they shouldn't stress too much about survivors taking tapes. And I say that because sometimes Sadaka players will like, they'll see a survivor take a tape and they'll instantly go for them to stop them from taking their condemn off. But I think with her current kit, it's not as big of a deal as it would be like with her 2.0 version. Um, so just practice your teleports, practice mind gaming with your D manifest. Um, stay away from add-ons that change her numbers drastically, like videotape copy. Even though it's not drastic, but it's enough to where it could throw you off. I guess that's okay. mostly it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, only thing I would add, uh, a little bit more advanced, uh, would be well, we kind of talked about it earlier. Um, when you're phasing, uh, your hands or your arms will kind of like. Oh yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that means the survivors can't can't really see you. They can, but not really. Um, use that to your advantage in mind games. Oh, and the lullaby as well. Oh, people, yeah. yeah uh, keep keep in mind of the lullaby because people do not know about the lullaby half of the time. <laughs> so they'll. I've seen like some Sadako players like try to do weird stuff where they like stand still or something that won't work because they can hear you. So just keep in mind of that, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've done, I've done dragons grip fishing with her before. Oh, that's. That that's dirty, actually. Um, I love doing it. Uh, 
She was, uh, it was her and Deslinger before Xenomorph came out, which is why I used to do that with the most. Um, <laughs> for anyone who, just... yeah, yeah, for anyone who hasn't been to my streams, uh, I, every, I, once a month I do a, 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 a Xenomorph fishing stream where all we do is run Dragon's Grip. I go to a gen that's like half complete and I just Dragon's Grip and wait in the tunnels all match. Oh god, that's <laughs> so gross. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get many kills, but uh it's fun as fuck. I love it. Um a lot of funny moments from it too. <laughs> I know I think you said you like to do this as Chucky too, right? Where you like sit in like bushes or something. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Insidious Chucky is like my guilty pleasure. I haven't run it much lately since we've been doing the um the fifty games of like the best stuff, but sitting in a bush as Chucky with Insidious is hilarious. <laughs> um because people are like, oh, you can hear his laugh. Do you know how many people play this game while they're listening to something else, especially on Survivor? Also, if he's not in his power, he doesn't really laugh that much, actually. He, they, when he's undetectable and not in Heidi Ho, um, they actually made it so he laughs uh, a little bit more. Did they? Huh? Yes. That was their way of countering people from doing that. That's why Plaything okay. is so good on him, because it's not undetectable. Yeah, it's a uh, it's oblivious, which gives a similar effect. But yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, tips for playing against. And I'm sure this is one people are going to be mad at you no matter what you say. <laughs> OK, so. so this is a big one for <laughs> sure. Um, All I can say is take tapes, do tape release. <laughs> I that sounds so simple, but taking a tape and not being afraid to just run around and turn TVs off, do that. Seriously, do that because you are hurting her so much by doing that. Um, and I know I said, like, new Sadako players shouldn't worry too much about survivors taking tapes, but the thing is, if you're not taking tapes, you are letting her condemn you. <laughs> so just, just take tapes, and it helps your teammates. It, it it gives her less mobility. Do that. <laughs> um, And don't pre-drop everything. Save pallets for when people get condemned. Yeah, I mean... Uh, obviously, like like we talked about the pre-dropping thing earlier. I mean, it, just in general, stop pre-dropping pallets. Yeah, it's please. Not, it's not even a matter of like, oh, it's not fun to play against. No, it's literally a matter of... Sometimes when you're doing that, you are hurting your team. And it it's really bad. <laughs> um But yeah. Uh I don't really I don't really have anything for, for playing against her. I would just basically say the same thing. Focus on the tapes if you can. Um I think um also I think it's usually good for like one person to do, be doing it because I notice sometimes like multiple people will be doing it, and while it's great you're charging off TVs, you're not focusing gens enough so i think having a good um balance between who's doing tapes and who's not is necessary for countering her correctly um what else oh yeah don't do gens near tvs that are turned on because of the passive condemn so take tapes still <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the 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 borderline of her counterplay just take tapes pretty much uh okay so we we kind of alluded to this earlier as well uh thoughts on her lore slash adaptation so because she's licensed uh this question gets a little different from most of the other killers but how would you say she was adapted from the films to the game pretty I well think I think she was adapted really well and I I say this about her lore but I really like what they did with the lore towards the end because they kind of alluded to the idea of her having like a connection with the entity and i think that's really fitting with her because she's she's like this force that nobody can understand mm -hmm. so i think by giving her that connection with the entity it's it's fitting for her character yeah um and i think even gameplay wise i think they translated the whole the I feel they translated the whole like seven that you die in seven days thing. Like, yeah, I think like, yeah, like they really captured the paranoia mm -hmm. that her curse like caused people in the films to have. Cause obviously it, I think 
with what they had to work with, because she's not even in her own film that much, you only really see her towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they adapted her pretty perfectly for that reason. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, I still feel like I'm playing Sokka. And I, I think... I, I, I think them making you feel like you're playing the character you're playing, as dumb as that sounds, I think it is... Oh, yeah. I, I think yeah. that's the most, one of the more important things. Because, I mean, like, I've criticized Pig before, where I don't really feel like I'm playing Jigsaw. No, Pig, just you just feel like you're playing some character that happens to have reverse bear traps. <laughs> yeah. Um, I won't go into my thoughts on the bear trap changes, because we've... I, I don't want to deal with that comment war again. But, uh, yeah. listen, I, I don't... It, it's the same thing with Freddy. I think Freddy was... The funny thing with Freddy, and uh, I've already recorded the Freddy uh, uh, the Freddy podcast, so if you're listening to this in the future, you already know my thoughts on this, but uh, I, I think they adapted Freddy well enough from the movie they chose. Yeah. I think it was a bad movie to choose. But they did what they could. Type yes. Of thing. Yeah. Um, once again, I talk about this in there. Uh, Freddy was a weird case because it's one of the few times someone went to behavior and not the other way around. Mm hmm. Um, so they probably came to them and were like, here, uh, you can have the rights to Freddy, but it has to be this one. Um, it wasn't so much behavior pushing to get like uh, Robert England and all that yeah and i feel like with sadako too the reason i also think she's so um well adapted is because of her sound design mm -hmm. um her sound design is really good and oh, oh yeah the tv's turning on is one of the best sounds in the game <laughs> yeah and the there's a little detail in her terror radius that i love um it's the uh 24 meter uh part of her terror radius mm -hmm. Um, there's like an, in, there's, uh, like ocean sounds that play in the background. And oh, I think that is so cool that's, because yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like waves on the beach type of thing. And I think that's such a cool detail because she's so closely linked to the ocean. Yeah. I, I think, I feel like people give behavior a lot of shit for like, they're so lazy and they didn't care. They just like threw this character in and not for Sadako necessarily, but for a lot of the licensed characters, mm -hmm. um, I disagree. I think they almost always, especially with what they have to work with sometimes, they do a really good job. And I can see the, the like, the effort and love and care that goes into it sometimes. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially, like, if you compare, like, Sadako or Chucky to, like, Nemesis. Mm -hmm. I mean, the difference is there, but I still think Nemesis embodies what he is in RE. Yeah. I still think... I, I still think, like, or he embodies, like, some aspect of Nemesis. Mm -hmm. um, I th I still think they, they do a good job overall as well. Yeah, I feel like, Nemesis. once again, I think Nemesis is the situation of it, the limitations of the game made it not work. Yeah, like, the presence of Nemesis is there, but not everything that people love about him is there, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, because, I mean, it... it because people people were talking about this with the alien chapter. It's like, why can't alien crawl up walls? That would have been so cool. And it's like, because the game engine won't allow that. I was gonna say you can't. Th that no, <laughs> no. There, there is so, we, me and me and Brand talked about it with with Xenomorph. There are so many issues with Xenomorph being able to crawl on walls. Um, yeah. One, the game engine probably can't handle it, and two, that would be so. Oh God, I don't even want to think about a power like that. Yeah, do that, you, yeah, motion sickness would be insane. Oh God, yeah. Uh, no, just no. <laughs> there, there is a way around it. Um, because uh, I've talked about this before. The Alien vs Predator game in like two thousand nine. I think it was two thousand nine. Um, you could play a Xenomorph and crawl on the walls in that game, and they found a way to solve it and fix the motion sickness problem. Huh. Yeah, they just put that's... a little there's a little cross here in the middle of your screen that always points to the floor. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. There's ways around it, but once again, the other problem with power like that is um it wouldn't work on every map. Uh I was gonna say map dependency, <laughs> yeah. Uh and I can promise you, promise you people would be mad and it would just be scamper but worse. 
Yeah, because, like, if there's a filler that has, like, something they could crawl up, you're just gonna kind of get hit, and you can't do anything. So I, I feel like they should just stay away from climbing. <laughs> yeah, like like I said, I think, but, but Sadako's adaptation, like, even Yuichi, we talked about it earlier, I think it was a unique way to do it, and they did it in such a good way. Um, I I also really appreciate like their perk icons. Mm -hmm. Like I like how Yoichi uh, Dark Theory is like a reference to the Cloth Man from the tape. Can I say, um, can, can I say something about Call of Brian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still to this day when I glance at it, I think it's a bamboo stick being cut in half. <laughs> I've heard that so many times, and I like. Like, it's funny because I could see it, but I also still just see Sadako. So I kind of see both of them. <laughs> it's so, for, for the longest time, I, I want to say at least six months, that's what I thought it was. I was like, that's a really weird perk icon. Until, like, I sat down and, like, actually stared at it, and I was like, oh! <laughs> that's her eye, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much more sense. Oh um, my god. What are, what are her other parts? Colorblind. Merciless. Oh, yeah, Merciless. And what's the last one? Uh, Colorblind, Merciless, and Floods. Oh, yeah, Floods is great. Floods is great. Um, yeah, I Floods icon is really cool, too. The the uh, hooks over the ocean. I like it. Yeah, and I think they all kind of fit um, kind of fit her like whole theme of venge vengefulness. Oh, yeah, I think especially the Merciless icon fits that perfectly. Yeah, not even like, just the icon, just, like, how, how they work. Oh, as a perk, yeah. yeah except yeah. maybe Call of Brian, like... Yeah, the Call more, of Brian, yeah. The more I think about it, like, it doesn't really make sense thematically. It's it's a weird one, I think. Um, but I also do appreciate that Call of Brian is, like, a reference to um, the message that's in her tape. Mm -hmm. The, um, I forget what it is. It's like, ah, I gotta, I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> and then Yuichi's perks. All right, listen. <laughs> okay, well, his his perk icons I think are good, but his perks themselves, ooh, they are interesting. We got reverse empathy. We got <laughs> we got we got worse background player. We. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We got only works if the killer's stupid. All right. <laughs> oh god, Yoichi, poor Yoichi. <laughs> like his, per like I love the idea of every single one of them. They're just bad, and they're bad in a way where you can't even just buff the numbers. Oh my god, that reminds me. I have to share this because it's really funny. Um, last year I did like this little kill your friends with my friends, mm -hmm. and I used my my Sadako uh, hex build. And one of my friends, as a meme, brought Dark Theory, and they spent, like, two minutes putting Dark Theory over all of my hex totems. <laughs> and I just thought it was the funniest thing, because that's also when Made For This was, like, meta. Oh, and Dark yeah. Theory was literally just made for this on totems. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, I know this debate has been uh, brewing around as of late for some reason. Uh, the reason that Made for This is a problem, or was a problem, and Dark Theory wasn't, is because Dark Theory requires a boon setup, and you have to stay in the location. Yeah, it's, and if the killer realizes you have it, they're just gonna snuff it instead of chasing you. Like... That, that is why Dark Theory was consider is considered as bad as it is, and Made for This wasn't. I have had this debate so many times, and I feel like I shouldn't have to. No, I feel like that's just logical because you, you get made or you got made for this just from getting injured. I had to okay. like I had to ban someone from my YouTube comments today because oh um God. well it, don't get me wrong they weren't being like it, they weren't saying anything like uh racist or like offensive or anything. No, I had to ban them because they they were getting in arguments with people in 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 the comments about like because unknown just got the buff where um. The three percent uh, hindered went to six percent uh, mm -hmm. when he hits you directly with a projectile. Oh uh, yeah, that yeah yeah yeah. And uh, someone or he was like, "How is how is three uh, percent not noticeable?" Um, when everyone's complaining about made for this, 
and, or was yeah. complaining about Mayfair. And I was like, I didn't say anything with someone, you know, explained it to them. They were like, well, it's because made for this was forever. Basically, as long as you're injured, this like literally yeah. only affects you for like a second. Um, and like it started the whole comment war. He started calling people names and like, oh, can, Lord. yeah, yeah. I like I'm all for discourse and discussion. And I there's a reason I don't ban most people from my comments. But shit like that will get you banned, okay? That's, like <laughs> that doesn't like that doesn't seem logical to argue about because it's it's obvious why they're different. Like yeah, yeah, make but, make but, for this was problematic, like you said, because it lasted forever, basically. Yeah, but but Freddie, number same, so same problem. I, I guess so, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Even Nothing though, else matters. Yeah, context is irrelevant, and 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 setup is is also irrelevant, and a reason it exists is also irrelevant. Because if the number is the same, clearly it's the same problem. Yeah, yeah. Because I think people forget that, like the reason it's there is so if they do hit you directly, uh, unknown doesn't lose too much ground. Yeah, because unknown. I think unknown does lose like a lot of speed when he winds up i'm pretty sure when when he's holding it out no but when he's prepping it yes yeah that's what i mean yeah, yeah. so like the animation of pulling it out and putting it back in does slow him down but uh having it out doesn't yeah um but yeah it, it's just i don't know i've said this before i love discussion I, I i i talk with people in my comments all the time i hear them out completely there are two things i don't like and that is straw men and being um uh, three things I don't like: strawman being completely, uh, completely dismissive, and uh, being just generally rude. <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Like people are like, oh, you can't ban me. I didn't say anything offensive. I can ban whoever I want. I was. Gonna, it's your <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> like, if all you're gonna do is just like tell people like their argument means nothing. Like, no, I'm banning you. I don't care. Clearly, you're not trying to have a discussion. You're just trying to speak on a soapbox and not have anyone contradict you. Um, yeah. I'm not some pariah of knowledge of this game. I get things wrong all the time. I have I have bad takes all the time. That's fine. As long as you telling me, like, why you think I'm wrong, I'm cool with it. If you're just like, listen here, you dumb shit, I'm not listening to anything you have to say and you're gone. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's... People like that just you can't even talk with them. It's it's like talking to a brick wall. Yeah, and it's very common in Dead by Daylight's community, unfortunately. Oh yeah, and especially if um a certain killer, aka Skull Merchant, is brought up. That oh, seems to be God. that seems to be the case. Uh the boogeyman on my channel is Knight. Um Is it? <laughs> Oh yeah, that's yeah. Because yeah. night, yeah. So yeah. Any any time I mention night, I get so many comments, <laughs> so many of how I'm wrong. Um, because I I don't think night is badly designed. I just think that they need some quality of life changes. Uh, <laughs> like I don't love night, but I I don't think that night is horribly designed, and I don't think people should be like. I don't know, getting hateful over it because it's not worth getting no, really aggressive over. It isn't. And like I said before, it, that's where like the whole idea of like when I was talking about um, people say like, I can't uh, I can't know the developer's intentions. Knight mm -hmm. was the big proponent of that because, well, you get a speed buff if you send the guards on a longer path. Which tells me they're trying to encourage you to do that. <laughs> They're trying to encourage you to like, yeah, to use the guards in more of a like a micro way. Yeah, and but it doesn't work like that on paper because why would you do that when you could just plop them down? My suggestion has yeah. always been punish you in some way for just plopping them down in place. Yeah. Um. And I, I was like, well, why don't we just do the opposite? If the, if it doesn't go far enough, you get hindered. You know what I mean? Kind of like singularity a little bit. Yeah. 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 Also, I didn't even know this about Knight uh, until very recently in one of those comments. Someone mentioned it. Uh, did you know that the longer the path is, the patrol path, the longer they chase for? I did not know that. No, yeah, I learned that very recently. That's interesting. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to encourage you to put them on long patrol paths instead of just plopping them down to the pallet. 
I think that would be a good place for them to start like <laughs> night changes, honestly. <laughs> uh man, it's 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 just I don't know, some people just same as singularity, um the me and uh the person I got for that, uh well I can tell you who it is. It's it's Phoenix. Um not HP Phoenix, a different Phoenix. Uh oh yeah. yeah. But they were telling me uh because I didn't know this. No one apparently knew this for a while. Did you know that singularity, uh the overdrive or the uh the overclock duration gets is is longer depending on how many people have a have a pod on them? Yeah, I had no idea about that yeah. <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know about that till she told me. I was like, what the fuck? She's like, Yeah, it doesn't say it anywhere on the power, it doesn't say it anywhere on the wiki, but yeah, it's a thing, it's been tested and proven. That's so wow. <laughs> they <sighs> That's kind of like um Sadako kind of has something like that too actually. Um when TVs are like when TVs are displaying the tape that means the survivors within 16 meters of the TV. Yeah. That is that's listed nowhere in her power. <laughs> well yeah, it's also like if you look at the HUD you can tell who has a tape in their hands cuz it's got the the bars. Yeah. Um, like n- some of that stuff is never listed anywhere, and I kind of wish it was. Yeah. Uh, even when she got the first rework, the whole like destroying a tape, like if you hit someone with a tape in their hands, it destroys it and gives them stacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the power description never said that. Oh god, I hated that change so much. <laughs> yeah, you might, might, yeah, but my point there is like, if you're a new player and have no idea and don't go to the wiki, you would have no idea that's a thing. Yeah, I, that's actually why I just hated that change because they. They didn't give enough information about... I hated that entire kit, because that entire kit was just... Mm -hmm. There was too much going on that they didn't specify enough on. Do you think her second rework was worse than her original, like, uh, when she came to the game? I think her second rework was stronger than her original kit, but I think it was way more boring and way more brain dead Mm -hmm. than her first kit and i think a lot of sadako mains would agree with that um i'm especially no go ahead go i especially because like i said i I hated the entire like hit survivors give them two stacks because they had a tape Mm -hmm. i think just that it wasn't well designed at all yeah it it just wasn't it wasn't well designed um i'm not gonna name who it is there is a particular content creator who I feel kind of not one pump Willie. I will say that right now, but Willie Willie's great. But uh, I think mm-hmm. there was another particular content creator who kind of popularized a very specific build with Sadako that changed her forever. Yeah, I I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, I won't. Yeah, once again, won't name names. Uh, but yeah, I think that. While interesting, and I love that it was able to be found, um, I think that that kind of hurt her in a way of, like, perception. Yeah, and the thing is, too, though, like, her original kit with with slugging, with ring drawing, um, the thing is about that is that took so much effort to pull off. And while it was boring, she still wasn't that strong. Her second kit, she was like a condemned monster with her second kit. Yeah. She could like spread global condemn every single TP and she could get high condemn stacks through hitting people with tapes. It just wasn't fun. Yeah. I in my just, opinion. Yeah, I would just play her randomly sometimes and just, you know, teleport all over the place and uh, somehow get three condemns. Yeah, exactly. It's that's exactly the issue I had with it. Like I wasn't even trying. Like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um But yeah. Uh, I don't know. Sadaka also, um, I think I think it's weird with this. I feel like the behavior is very close with the rights holders. Yeah. Um, because I think it's how she's been able to get three reworks and uh, as many cosmetics as she has, especially on mobile. Oh god, I wish they would bring those to the base game so bad. Yeah, I want or at one. least like one of them. I want the flower one. Me too. Yeah, uh, the the red one. Yeah, yeah, the flower one's so cool and the unique Mori. Oh, it's so good. It really is. Um, but, you know, mobile, mobile charges 12k or excels for Naughty Bear, so <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> um, God, this is so fucking... <laughs> I saw someone bring up the argument, like, Valorant uh, sells skins for, like, $80. First off, no, they don't. They sell bundles for $80, which is still insane. Yeah. But, um, 
Second off, uh, Valorant is, it, it's a completely different beast. And third off, just because Valorant does it doesn't mean it's right. And especially because Naughty Bear is literally $15 in the base game. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and uh, you could you could go spend $15 or you can go spend $100. You could probably buy the Naughty Bear game for like five bucks right now. Yeah, and I think, it, yeah, I don't know. I don't like DVD Mobile, but I am salty that they have exclusive Sadako skins. DVD Mobile does a lot of things that I wish the base game would do, but it also does a lot of things that I'm glad the base game doesn't do. Yeah, like the emotes and stuff? No thanks. I The emotes are a weird one. Um, I think if they only activated once the gates were open, I think they'd be fine. I mean, yeah, because I, I do miss, like, with VHS's emotes. I loved VHS's emotes, so mm -hmm. I guess I, I do wish we had emotes in some way. But Killers not ki killers would have to have emotes, too, though. Oh, yeah, it would be so funny for Killers to have emotes, um, actually. Yeah. The, the Running Man Dance on Wart, I, I used to run that one all the time in, v in VHS. I that oh, one. yeah, yeah, I loved that one, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of which one I loved. Um, the there was The Thriller Dance. Like the thriller dance, um, yeah. I, I, remember, I have a very, very distinct memory on uh, it was the day before the servers went down for VHS. I was playing Werewolf, and uh, one guy was just staring at the window, uh, looking out in on Wart's map. And uh, all four of us were all I'm sorry, all five of us were just doing the thriller dance, just watching out. It's so funny, it's, <laughs> like moments like that don't really happen. I mean, they do happen in DVD, but there's a lot less. Directly. But not like yeah, yeah. They don't happen to like the level that they did in VHS. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the um. I don't remember which emote it was, but it was the one where you like walked forward. It was one of the Halloween emotes. Yeah, they also did like the the rabbit dance one or the rabbit hop one uh, for Easter. Uh, oh yeah, I, I remember that one too. Yeah. yeah, you would actually move forward, which is great. <laughs> yeah, I I do wish DVD would do some stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and I know some people will be like, oh, it's a horror game. Like, it, it, it would kill the horror. Uh, maybe, but, like, not really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, we all have to th remember that multiplayer games inherently cannot really be scary. No. And, I mean, no one finds DVD scary, really, anymore, besides maybe, like, new players. Um, I... I only get scared in this game when I'm playing killer and some random ass person drops a pallet. Oh, that's a or when someone like vaults in your face. Yeah, yeah, that's a jump scare and a half. Only time. Only time I get scared in this game is when I'm playing killer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I, once again, I get it. People are like, oh, well, it needs to keep to the aesthetic and all this. And that's that's a personal preference thing, man. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, we also have to remember and I say this a lot, and this isn't to encourage the deads to be greedy. It is a business. <laughs> yeah. And if emotes sell, they're probably going to sell them. I was going to say that what would stop them from just making more and getting more sales? I mean, how many times has someone said, like, if they made Mori's buyable, I would I would give behavior my money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it'd be very similar to that. I, I don't know. They, they would have every reason to just keep making more because it's making them money. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it, it's it's weird. Uh, it is, yeah. I, I just, yeah. I, we'll see. What, this game is going to be completely different in, like, a year. I can almost guarantee it. Probably. I mean, well, and it, go on. I was going to say, in a year, we're going to have, like, I don't know. We're going to have a Fortnite crossover. We're going to have Springtrap in the game. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have all this wild shit in the game that we wouldn't have expected <laughs> as much as people joke about springtrap and such i'm telling y'all and this is a, someone who like wants springtrap in the game it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when yeah i, I actually it, it really agree. is just a matter of when i don't care what your thoughts on fnaf are it is insanely popular <laughs> yeah i i think i would love springtrap because i i mean i am actually a fnaf fan um but i just i like to joke about it still sometimes because yeah. it's such a big topic yeah i've said it before like if you look past like the whole like the fan base and if you look past um like the whole like the lore is convoluted if you just like go to like the base idea of springtrap it is a great idea for a slasher villain 
Oh, definitely. It really is. A murderous psychopath who gets trapped in an animatronic suit. Yeah. That is... That... That's... That's... Like, that's... that's a, It's brilliant. And I think with how DBD, like, does models, they would make his model look really cool, I think. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, it, it's, it's just brilliant. It really is. Uh, mm -hmm. And then as far as, like I said, the popularity, I mean... I remember someone telling me the reason they don't want FNAF in this game is because it would bring a younger player base. Uh, huh. While I kind of agree with that, at the same time, I think some people don't realize a lot of FNAF fans are actually about my age. Yeah, I was going to say, because FNAF, and I don't think people also realize that FNAF is like a decade old at yeah, this point. Yeah, it's like multi-generational. Yeah. Um, there's so many like different age groups that love FNAF. It's not just one. Yeah, I don't really play the games anymore, but like I I still keep up with the lore when I can. I still watch all those kinds of videos. Like I Yeah, exactly. I I I haven't played the game since Sister Location, but I still keep up with FNAF content and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I mean like the movie, like like the movie did fucking so well. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the movie oh it it performed better than i would have ever imagined it to yeah it, it's it's funny because you know the, the biggest criticism that movie had was if you didn't know like the games um it's not a good movie and it's like yeah that's kind of what we all wanted <laughs> yeah it was for the fans uh and would you look at that when you appeal to the fans you make a bunch of money <laughs> exactly <laughs> um yeah, it's it's just like that. I've heard people want Jack Black in this game now. <laughs> Jack Black. <laughs> so, so there was an interview Jack Black did, and this was after Nicolas Cage came out, and someone mentioned that to them, uh, to him. It, they were like, "Yeah, you know Nicolas Cage is in Dead by Daylight now." He's like, "Really? I would love to be in that game." And then he did like a wink to the camera, oh and people God. people were like, "Oh, it's confirmed. Jack Black's coming to Dead by Daylight." <laughs> I mean, it could happen though if he if he really wanted it to. I think it could happen. Oh, for sure. And I don't like at this point. Once again, once Nicolas Cage got brought into this game, I think the floodgates are open. Like I, anything's game now. Yeah, like, I agree. I, like, I I don't know. Like it's don't get me wrong. There's like certain things I like wouldn't want in the game, but like Nicolas Cage is one of those ones where like it's so ridiculous it works. Yeah, definitely. Um. It's not like it's out of place necessarily. Like he is, but like in a good way. Yeah, I, I actually think like when they dropped that update, other than Sadako's two point zero version, mm -hmm. I had a lot of fun in DVD during that time, just because everyone was fucking around with plot twists, mm -hmm. and I I miss those types of uh, like paragraphs and chapters that they do. I, I, that's I, more fun yeah i i'm hoping uh for the anniversary um i'm hoping that like that and alan wake uh kind of showed them that uh paragraphs of just a solo survivor work yeah um because i i do think that's definitely a problem this game has sometimes it, it's not necessarily con it's kind of content drought but not really because it's like we get the killer and the survivor and then it's Maybe a month and a half later, we get like a mid chapter that is basically mm -hmm. just like buffs and nerfs. And then another month and a half passes and then we get the next one. But it's kind of like after this first like month or so, there's like nothing. Yeah, definitely in between like mid chapters, I think the game that's when the game gets stale for me, at least. Mm -hmm. Is after a mid chapter, like everything is fun for a little bit. That's how it was recently. I I enjoyed Sadako's new kit, and then I got burnt out again, and I just stopped playing. And that's why I'm waiting for All Things Wicked to come out to start playing again. Really. Yeah, I'm excited for Unknown. Um, Me too. I really re they didn't mention it, but I really hope they fix the bouncing. Yeah. Uh. God, that was my only problem with him was the bouncing was inconsistent. Otherwise, I loved him. It, I thought he was pretty fun. Yeah, it or it. Then. I I yeah, I don't even I don't even know if the the lore specifies it does pronouns. It doesn't. It doesn't. No. Um, that's why I think it's it. 
but I'm not sure. But it's also it's also the same situation with with Xenomorph. I always say her because I think it makes more sense. But... I I always say her as well with Xeno. Yeah, it just makes more sense. Even though there are Xenomorph kings. True. Um, I, I learned this from Bran. Uh, there are Xenomorph kings. They're basically uh, their bread is usurpers, <laughs> which is really funny to me. That is funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I mean, that's it, a whole other. I, I say this a lot, but that's a can of worms I don't really want to get into. Not because I don't think the discussion needs to be had, but I don't think uh, one we're we're the people to have it, and I don't think uh, it, it's it's relevant at the moment. That's all. No, it's not. It's not. I agree. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, would you say I'm pretty sure she is? But would you say Sadako is map dependent? So, I feel like. Depending on the map, you kind of do have to change how you play a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like on indoor maps, for example, like Midwich, you can just go crazy with teleporting and you could just condemn a bunch of people. But on maps like Toba, for example, I think you have to play a little more safe with your TVs um, because m big maps that have widespread TVs if you're just constantly going between them, you're not going to get much value from them mm -hmm. and you're not going to get condemn high because they're so spread out on a big map. So I, I think she is a little map dependent, but I don't think she's incredibly map dependent, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. She, she's one of those ones where the map dictates how you play, not necessarily how strong she's going to be. Yeah, like if I'm playing on Midwitch, I'm going to focus condemn more. If I'm playing on like Rotten Fields, I'm going to focus <laughs> just raw like hooks and downs instead i was gonna say if you're playing on broaden fields you're just gonna focus on uninstalling the game but whatever Heck, that too actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> um honestly uh maps i'm sorry i'm starting to hate toba so much i didn't mind it before um and it, it's it's funny because i've been doing stats like actually like looking at my kills and stuff toba mm -hmm. is the only map i constantly get zero kills on so my issue with toba too comes down to like I hate the colors of the map. I, I like have. The, I like the colors. I, I. But the only reason I hate the colors is because I have like sensitive eyes. Oh. So so playing on Toba, like I get really bad eyes drain from playing on it. So I I I do have filters for it, but I mm -hmm. just that's another like nit nitpick on it that do, I don't love. Do you have um? Have you invested in a? a I'm about to do an ad, I guess. Uh, have you invested in like gunner glasses or anything like that? I have not, no. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend them if you can get them. Um, they're usually, like, they're they're decently cheap, like 40 to 60 bucks. Um, mm. You can get them at, like, Best Buy. Uh, but they basically, they're, they're like, um, they basically, they're like, uh, they're like eye saver mode glasses. If you've ever put oh. eye, eye saver mode on, like, a, a, a monitor before. I um, think I've seen those before, actually. Yeah, they really help with eye strain. I wear them sometimes uh, if I forget to put eye saver mode on my monitor. Uh because I actually, because I actually have the opposite problem in this game that most people have. Because a lot of people use filters in this map to like bright or game to brighten things up. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't see shit when it's bright, so I actually use I don't use filters, but I use monitor settings to darken my screen. Yeah, I feel like Toba and also Bargo kind of have that issue too. Oh mm -hmm. God, Bargo's horrible with <laughs> eye strain. Oh Lord. I played Chucky. I hate Borgo for like all the same reasons everyone else does. <laughs> um, God damn, fix the scratch marks on Borgo, please. I, I wish they made the map just look ashy instead of red. Yeah. I think uh, it would have been cooler ashy. <laughs> I mean, Borgo has a lot of other problems than that, but, like, yeah, that, that gets on my nerves. Also, can, Behavior, can you guys fix scratch marks for Chucky, please? Please. <laughs> <laughs> it is so... It, I look like an idiot so many times, because I don't know if it's because the camera is a little lower, or, like, zoomed in, or what, but, like, scratch marks are different for him, I swear. I need to prove this, but... You gotta do like an experiment with it. Yeah. Someone someone told me they're brighter for him, and I can't prove that. You know what's funny? 
sometimes Sadako's like lower camera actually will screw me over too with scratch marks because she's so short. Yeah. Like if I'm on swamp and you're <laughs> and I'm in like the tall grass as her, I can't see shit. <laughs> Xenomorph has the same problem in runner mode. Freddy has the same problem, and Chucky has the same problem. Like, at the moment I've loaded to, like, Grim Pantry, I'm like, well, if they run into the fucking grass, I can't see anything. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> the amount of times I played Chucky, loaded into Swamp, been like, alright, I'll just play blindfolded, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> so it was like in the camera's third person though. You should see it doesn't go over the grass. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Yeah. Swamp. Uh I hate Swamp. I wonder so there's this thing with Chucky with Cornfield. Um because he's shorter, they actually I don't I can't believe I uh this is a thing. Uh the corn actually has real physics. Well not real, but uh it actually has like proper physics to a degree. Because he's oh. so short, the, the stocks actually move more. Oh, that's um, really... Hmm. <laughs> so I'm curious if Sadako does the same thing. So I wonder if, like, <laughs> that's probably going to make survivors, like, see her coming from a mile away be manifested. <laughs> <laughs> they just see, like, they don't hear her yet or see her. They just see the corn, like moving side to side well, towards that so so okay so when you're playing chucky on those like the corn doesn't it's not like drastically different but it's different like it, it like moves a little bit more for him i um, wonder if it is that way for her actually i think he, it might actually be that way yeah because i think ghostface does the same thing when he crouches that's so weird yeah it's such a strange thing that of all like the things to add like proper physics to that was what they went with it's like specific killers, yeah. Specific, it's really... yeah. specific killers in the corn, like really. <laughs> oh man, like the grass is like painted into the maps, but meanwhile the corn is like actually physically there. Uh, uh cold one is such a I hate, wild map. I hate Colwyn. I hate Toba, and I hate Haddonfield. Me too. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how infuriating it is to chase somebody on Haddonfield as Chucky? I do, yes. I have experienced it firsthand, unfortunately. You can't slice and dice, and you're 110. I actually hate Haddonfield for Sadako as well, because I hate those fu those fucking um, two Man. windows that are, like, I um... Yeah. In the houses. Yeah. 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 I don't mind I don't mind Haddonfield. Like I still it's not I'm not the biggest fan of the map, but um I don't mind it on most killers. But Chucky has made me despise that map. <laughs> oh my god. Him and Deathslinger. Deathslinger's not great on Haddonfield either. Because no, of, it's because of the windows. Because if they jump out the window and you spear them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's that's those it's those two windows that are so ugh. Sadako can't do anything about them. She just has to either vault or go the other way around. And well, good luck doing that. Yeah. It's not going to give you distance. Bamboozle doesn't even help because it's two windows. Yeah, <laughs> I I despise those two windows. I wish they would just remove one. It's yeah, it, it's it's a weird decision. Uh, I forgot yeah. who I was talking to about it, but like it's funny that they reworked Haddonfield. Because I actually think that once they boarded up like the God window on ha on the old Haddonfield, I think the other one, the old one was fine. Mm -hmm. After they did that, I think that I think it was perfectly fine. I don't think it needed an update at all. No, I feel like they they made some weird choices with Haddonfield for sure. Well, I mean, they made some weird choices with maps in general. Yeah. Um, garden. <laughs> garden. Oh my god. That's another Sadako map that I do not like. Well, she's a basic in one killer, so yeah. I mean, sometimes there, a TV does spawn in main near one of the windows, and I actually love that TV because if they vault it as I'm teleporting, I'm going to hit them no matter what. But other than that, it's not a fun map, no. Yeah, Garden, Garden needs, some, needs some work. Garden of Joy? Haha, <laughs> so joyful. It I is. love that map. I love it. And I also love that the killer it came out with uh, kind of sucks on it. <laughs> oh, poor Dredge. Uh, it was 
give give Dredge. But Dredge deserves some more love, and not just skins. Please give him something else. Right. <laughs> oh my god. Like, he's not abysmal, but, like... That's... Lo that's... Locker spawns fuck him up. Yeah, that, what's funny to me about that is people... I remember when people were like, oh, Dredge is just a better Sadako. No, no, he's not. <laughs> no, no, he's not. Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's way worse than Sadako because Sadako can kill people instantly if she catches them with Condemn. Dredge has a shitty anti-loop and lockers. Yeah, he, okay, okay. Here's my idea for fixing Dredge. If you down someone in Nightfall, they instantly die. I, I agree. Yep. That's that's email <laughs> behavior with that change. <laughs> there we go. Let's go. Uh, I'm writing a we professional. We fixed Dredge, everybody. Okay. Um, I don't know. But someone suggested like a lot of his add-ons could probably just become base kit. Like the skull add-on? Yeah. Not even this. Not even like those. Someone suggested like boat key should be should be base kit. Oh yeah, I don't even know what his add-ons do. Uh, Boat Key you. is the one that uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. I used to play him a lot. Uh, I still have a hundred fucking cakes on him, so I need to play him more. Um, yeah, he was the he came out during that anniversary. Got lots of cake on him. Yeah, same with Singularity. I have like I I'm I'm I've lowered it since then, but I'm at like fifty Aramisus on on, on Larry. Should I share how many I have on Sadako? <laughs> how many do you have on Sadako? I have a 1,250. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I play, I, that's what I was P100ing her during the anniversary, mm -hmm. so that's why. Also, uh, PSA, that won't matter because this will come out after it happens, but... Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> uh, unknown, um... Is released the day before grade reset. Oh, so yeah. if you're farming your blood points, use all two million on him on on day one, and then you'll pro if you if you're at Eerie on both Survivor and Killer, you'll get two more two million more the next day. That's true, actually. Um, yeah, I, I didn't notice that till till uh, a couple days ago. I was like, oh hell yeah, <laughs> I, could, I could like like I can get him to P three and like. A day. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I forgot Grey Reset's even coming up, actually. Yeah, February. Was your short came, came really fast. Yeah, all oh, that's true, because February was shorter, yeah. I have to. I haven't even hit Eerie 1 on Killer yet. I'm like Eerie 2. Neither have I. Um, I, I've been, I haven't been playing as much off-stream as I usually do. I've been very busy with this, so... Um, yeah, I, I've been playing Fortnite with my friend mm. non-stop, so that's what I've been doing other than DVD. Yeah, I, IRL talk, uh, for those listening who don't know, because I talk about this on stream all the time, I work 60 to 80 hour weeks at my normal job. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I stream three days a week for three hours, I make daily videos, and I do this. <laughs> You're really busy, yeah. Yeah, um... Some people can say my videos are lazy or whatever because all I do is like talk and put music over it. Uh, there's a reason there is lazy. Uh, trust me, I would love to make them more edited. I would. I just don't have the time. No, and I mean the actual content in the videos, I think, makes up for a lot of that. Yeah. Once again, I don't I always have the best takes, and I understand that. But you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. I was and, gonna say uh, it's DVD. <laughs> well, yeah, and on top of that, like I try not to do the generic. Um, and nothing against people who do, but I try to do the generic commentary stuff. Um, I, yeah. I try to, like, talk about stuff that's, like, a little bit more unique. Um, I, I think one of my favorite discussion topics was, uh, BFFs on, uh, Legion. And how it was a really big missed opportunity. Oh. <laughs> well, that's an interesting one. Well, because it was, it's the, it still is the only add-on in the game with a token system. Oh. I I honestly didn't even realize that the add-on did that because I don't know Legion add-ons. Yeah, so BFFs, um, I'm, I don't remember the exact numbers. It's either 15 or 30 tokens. I think it's 15. Um, if you get 15 tokens with it, uh, you know, in in-game, you you're, you're faster. Oh, actually, yeah. I do remember BFFs now. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It, it's not that great of an add-on, honestly, unless like you combine it with like Noed and stuff. Uh, but the idea is really unique. 
They should do more add-ons with tokens. Yeah, I really think they should. Yeah. Um, and if they make the effects good enough and the condition good enough, it would encourage people to play killers in a le- in a in kind of a less optimal way. <laughs> that way, they can stop making like I don't know, do X thing, and you <laughs> and survivors get exposed. <laughs> <laughs> they, hey, they chilled out on exposed add-ons, to be fair. Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've had one. Damn, I can't even think of the last one we had. I can't either, actually. I'm trying to think of what killers... Dredge. I think Dredge... It it was Dredge, yeah. I think Dredge was the last one, and his isn't even that good. No. Uh, The problem with Dredge is is his isn't even that it's not that good. It's it's very... So much has to go right. (laughs) Yeah, poor Dredge. For those who don't know what Dredge's eerie does, uh, basically, I, I could be wrong in the numbers, but it's the last 15 seconds of... Nightfall, everyone is exposed. It's such a... Yeah, that add-on is really um, situational from what I remember. Yeah, I've gotten it to work. My suggestion for it has always been, like, I think it's fine. Um, I just wish there was, like, a bar next to the meter that tells you when the 15 seconds are there. Yeah, something that gives you, like, feedback. Yeah, because... Or some sort of input, yeah. Yeah, because I know where it is, because... You know, nightfall's forty-five seconds. I know that. Yeah. Um. So like, I know where it's. I know it's a quarter of the bar. So I'm like, okay. Um. So yeah. So I I know where it is, but like, just having it there would be nice. Like in bright yellow or something, so I can kind of just glance over at it, knowing when to hit somebody. Yeah, I'm so glad they didn't give Sadako an exposed out on. Oh my god. I remember when people, would... were, people were saying when someone's condemned, they should be exposed. No! <laughs> <laughs> that's like, to me, that's like on the same level when people say she should face through things, demanifested, and I'm like, no! She's just nurse, but doesn't blink? Exactly. Like, she's a real ghost? Okay. Like, I understand, like, I think, I, I can't remember who said it, but um, I think People have good intentions when they say that change, but in execution, that would be so no. There's no. there's a lot of killer change ideas I've heard over the years that I think it's the same way where it's like, I get what they're trying to do, but this would be so bad. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I've, I've heard like the, the phasing through things with Sadako be suggested so many times, and I'm like... It, that would be so it, it would destroy her balance in my opinion and mm-hmm. i like her chase being not as good and i think that would make her just too too strong i mean i've heard like make artist 110 i've heard um oh god i've i've heard uh for legion make it so when you hit someone with feral frenzy like like another like legion member spawns i've heard uh, stuff like that like <laughs> It's giving night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's the thing. I remember when night came out, everyone was like, "This should have just been what Legion was," and like, no, no, it shouldn't have been. No. <laughs> or like when people are like, Victor should be an AI. No. Oh my god. <laughs> or Victor should be in third person. I've heard oh, that one thrown around. God. Listen, the reason Chucky is in third person is because he's a hundred and ten. And it just works with Chucky. Victor's power is... You have to aim his power. Yeah, on top of that, Victor is 150% movement speed. <laughs> if that shit was in third person, it would be broken as hell. What are they gonna... Also, what, yeah, he's in first person to aim. What are they gonna do, add a crosshair? Like... Yeah... I, I don't know. It, it's there's a lot of suggestions for killers I've heard over the years. No, and uh, when I hear those suggestions, I just question. I'm like, how much have you played of this killer? Like the, the like what she said though. Like I I I understand the intentions behind a lot of them. Um. Yeah. But like with the Legion one, it's like it's not even necessarily a power thing. I think people are just trying to get the thematic down. Like, yeah, I feel like Legion is. I I don't know it. It's just people. I think wanted all all of the members to be together as a part of the power, but it just doesn't work. I I do like the idea. 
and I still hold to this one, that their Mori should have all of them. True, similar, that is true. Similar to Knights. Um, yeah, that would be cool, actually. That, that, is, that is the one, that's where I will draw the line. I do, I do think that would be cool. Um, yeah. I think it would be fine. Otherwise, the, I mean, their Mori's still great, though. Oh, yeah. Legion has a pretty good Mori. Uh, speaking of, I don't even know this because I don't see it very often. Is Sabaka's Mori the same as her <laughs> Uh, no, 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 it's the breaking the arms. Never mind. Yeah, she breaks, she like lifts them up, breaks the arm, breaks mm -hmm. the leg, and then she stares at them afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I always forget about that. Uh, so skins. Um, Sadako doesn't have too many. So um, I, I do like her two skins that she has. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the skeleton one because of the condemn eye. Mm -hmm. But the skeleton one's actually my favorite just because I think it looks so creepy and I think it makes her look really creepy. Um, my only criticism with it is I wish it had unique sounds, like more unique sounds. Maybe when she hits someone, there's like a gross bony sound effect or something like that. Kind of like uh, George's uh, doll one. Yeah, I wish they added just more of that to make it more ultra rare because it is an ultra rare skin. Is it? Is It's a set, isn't it? Yes. That's... Both of her skins are sets, actually. Oh, yeah. Of course they are. Yeah, why wouldn't they be? Wait, hold up. The blighted one is a set? I think so, yeah. I believe it is. I should know this. Oh my god. No way. Wait, really? Wait, let me I'm looking it up. Hold on. No, I'm only I'm only like hesitant because I didn't think any of the blighted skins were sets. I yeah, it's a set. What the fu why? Yoichi's is a set too. Why? I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know why it's a set. Yeah, I never... Wow. Actually, now that I think about it, I think Xenomorph's Blighted one is a set, too. It is, yeah. <laughs> and I bet if they do bring that flower skin in, that'll be a set, too, probably. I Listen, I, I understand some skins being sets. I do. Um. However... There are so many sets in this game where I'm like, why? Like, Clown, uh, Clown got the cat skin recently. Mm -hmm. Um, it's the only one that's a set. That's so weird. Why? <laughs> and it, speaking of the, you know what really bothers me about Sadako's cosmetics? They make everything in it a set, but her weapon is never actually seen on her model. Mm-hmm. Her weapon is only, like, a part of the little animation she does in the lobby and obviously in-game. Yeah. I'll so it feels even weirder that they're a part of the set. Yeah, and all it really does is change the color. I mean, the symbol changes too, but... Uh... That's not that big of a difference, yeah. yeah. What does the blighted one say? Because uh, the, the red I, one says blood, the base I, one I forget, and then the skeleton one's, like, death, I think. I think the base one says curse, if I remember correctly. It either says curse or grudge. I think, actually, no, I think the blighted one says grudge. Mm. I'm pretty sure. Mm. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Commenters who know more than us, uh, please, please correct us. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember someone saying what it said, I just can't remember it. The only one I know for a fact is the red one's blood. The only one I know for a fact. Yeah, I think the base one is curse, actually. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, are you a fan of the blighted skin though? Even though it's a set. Uh, yeah, I use the blight. I switch between them. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I'm not the biggest fan, <laughs> if I'm honest. I mean, the Mori. I've I've heard people say uh, the eyeball kind of looks like a meatball, and I mean, <laughs> it it does. It does kind of look like a meatball. <laughs> I just I don't know. It's it's too cluttery on the screen for me i think is my problem with it yeah i i get that i i think the thing i don't like about her blighted skin is the uh the weird like moss that they put on it the mm. green stuff i don't like that i i think that looks kind of out of place and it looks really bad on her hair and stuff yeah also her getting a blighted skin is part of the reason i think uh behavior is very very cozy with the uh the uh the the license holders. Oh yeah, definitely because it's original content yeah. that they created around her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, same with like DVD Mobile. I mean, it's a it's a different developer, but like, 
she gets she, i think she has like six skins in that game yeah because they're all like different variants mm -hmm. yeah um i don't think mobile has the blighted skin yet though i could be mm, wrong about that no nah, i don't think so i know they're about to get chucky oh i know yeah uh which is i don't know <laughs> i, don't, I, I, don't, I, I hope, hope we I, don't I do hope we get Blighted Chucky. That would be cool. Oh, uh, my idea for Blighted Chucky. Uh, you've seen. Uh, I I know you've seen the show, right? Mm hmm. You know, uh, the scene in the hospital. Oh, where he's all burnt. Yeah. He, yeah, where he's all like melted. Yeah. Just do that and add orange to it, and I would be in love. <laughs> that would be really cool. Um, Chucky is one of the most disappointing cosmetics in the game to me. Not because they're not good. Cosmetics are all good, in my opinion. It's that he's a fucking doll, and you can't. They're all sets. Yeah, I. The, <laughs> the, so this is funny because I told my friend this, and I was. This, I'm like, this is such a niche reason for them to not make them a set. But I really wish I could put like the stitch face on his regular set to make it look like his curse look. Mm -hmm. like, I wish we could do stuff like that, well, and I hate that we can't. I always say this: uh, Chucky is a doll. The literal most malleable thing on the planet. <laughs> and all of his skins are sets. <laughs> like, nothing would clip. I mean, besides Tiffany, obviously, but like Chucky himself, though, nothing would clip if you could mix and, mix and match them, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's so weird and I don't get it. But whatever. I don't get it either. There's, there's a reason. I'm sure there's a reason. Like, I, don't I even, guess I don't even care if I had to buy the whole set. You know what I mean? Like, as long as I can customize yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't know. I, I've said this. Sets are a weird thing in this game that I hate. <laughs> I hate them yeah, so much. I mean, I shared why I think Sadako's is weird, and it's... I don't know. I wish, like, they didn't make everything in sets be a part of it. Like, they at least could exclude weapons in some way or something, so at least you can customize something about it. Yeah, and like I said, I like, some sets I understand. Like, I yeah. get why that's a set. That makes like, sense. Like Naughty Bear, for example. Yeah, like or I, Tiffany. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I get why those are sets. That's fine. But... <laughs> clown's cat skin, really? really? Yeah. That has to be a set. I don't set. know. Also, clown, yeah, clown currently has the most personas in the game, just saying. <laughs> that's, that's an interesting fact I did not know. <laughs> yeah, he's got Mr. Puddles, he's got Chicken Man, and now he's got the cat. Wow. <laughs> Damn clown. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, uh, okay, I, you know, people kind of answer this with the state of the game, but I still like asking it. Do you still have fun with the game? I I have like bursts of fun with DVD. Mm -hmm. Like I get like I'll get burnt out for a little bit and then I will go back to playing for like months on end. So I think I take breaks, but I still enjoy the game. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, people it's generic to say, but breaks are good. I, I think more people need to take them like actual oh, yeah. actual breaks, like no content, no nothing for like at least a couple weeks. Yeah, like last year around March when Skull Merchant came out, it was around like before Skull Merchant, but mainly around that chapter. I took like a six month break from the game and then, well, not really. It was it was more so like Knight's chapter into Skull Merchant's chapter. That time frame is when I took that big break and then I came back around the anniversary and because of that break, I had motivation to finish Sadako's Prestige, and I was enjoying the game again. Yeah, I, so, was, I was... Breaks are good. Yeah, I was playing VHS at that time, so I was taking a, a massive break. I came back for all the killers, obviously, but otherwise, I kind of stayed away from the game for a little bit. Oh, um, yeah, I, I also was playing VHS around that time, too. Um, You probably played it against me. I probably have, yeah. I was <laughs> just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> you probably played against me a few times. <laughs> Um, we probably encountered each other in some way. <laughs> Which is funny. It's it's funny. That was one of my favorite things about that game. Uh, and it's probably the worst, like, praise I can give it. Is, like, the community was so small, I actually really loved it for that. But, like, you yeah. can't, it's not sustainable, and I understand that. But everyone knew everybody. I loved going against people I knew, yeah. Like, it still happens in DVD, but, like, not very often. 
No, I I don't go against any of my friends anymore, and I, it makes me sad. <laughs> like, but... I don't know. Like, I've gone against the same few people every now and again, especially on specific nights, but, like, yeah, for the most part, I never see anyone ever again. <laughs> no, I mean, and if I do see people, it's usually people that were salty <laughs> towards me. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I get a, I do get a lot of salt just for playing Sadako. Not gonna lie, um, I I got a new Steam uh, comment just tonight of someone that was mad about a game. At, um, but yeah. At this point, I don't think there's any killer anyone likes playing again. I'm really, yeah. I'm genuinely convinced of that. <laughs> I, I like I said earlier, if you're not playing like a top chase killer, people are just gonna complain. And even when you do play a top chase killer, they can play. Well, no, no, no. People want to play against a top chase killer, but they don't want you to be super good. Yeah, like, they want you to be, like, Billy, but you don't know how to use your power. Yeah. That's... And if you know how to use your power, well, they're going next. Yeah, like, they, 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 want, they want the struggle, but they don't want the, like, the immense stomp. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's what it is. I, I don't know. It's just like with Ch- I get so many complaints when I play Chucky, and I and I don't understand where the complaints come from because I very rarely scamper. Yeah, you just um, know how to use your power, and they get mad at it. Yeah, it's like okay, man, what do you want me to do? Just just aim one you the whole time. Even then, I guarantee they get mad. Yeah, that's that's also what I meant when people like complain about condemn, and I'm like, what do you want me to do? Just teleport around and not go for people condemned or something i don't know it's it once again it's just a weird philosophy with this game like i get i understand hating killers like not liking them but it just like i said it just seems like no one likes any killer and i know that's not true obviously but i don't know like i'll see lists of like we're on you're on twitter a lot just like i am i mean how often do you Mm -hmm. see like a tier list of like killers i enjoy playing against the killers i don't and like the i enjoy one is like four or five and every other killer is in the don't i just saw one of those literally like yesterday actually um and it's like why are you even playing the game (laughs) and yeah yeah like i mean i have very select killers too that i like going against i love going against sadako shocker uh i i mean i enjoy like nurse though because i i like how nurse changes the gameplay um I there's actually not a lot of killers that I hate, and Pinhead that's is the only one for me. I don't blame you because Pinhead's really annoying in Solo Q. But I also don't I don't DC the moment I see one. No, like I don't even hate Skull Merchant. I actually think Skull Merchant can be kind of fun because I I do like the the micromanaging with drones and stuff, mm-hmm. and that's the same reason I like going against Sadako. I I like managing tapes. I think it's fun. It's different. Yeah, it's not the same gameplay loop, and it's it's fun to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the thing. I think I think because I've kind of walked back on this a little bit, but I, I think the killers being unique and every killer having like some form of inherent slowdown is actually good for the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, because like clown, for example, he's really good in chase, but he has no map mobility. He has no like secondary objective, so he's gonna more than likely unless like. It's me or Aaron Ed. Uh, they're bringing, they're bringing, Poor clown. Yeah, unless it's me or Aaron Ed, like you're bringing like um, you're bringing like full four slowdown perks because you kind of have to. Yeah, and I think that's the case of like Chucky too. Chucky's so good in chase, but he doesn't really have much to actually like well, pressure the map, I guess. Yeah, and even then, and people will argue this till the day the fucking cows come home, but. If Chucky messes up in Chase, he is massively punished. Yeah. Um, and that's not that's not me trying to be biased for Chucky, but it's like he's a hundred and ten with no range. And I'm not saying buff him like to make him like one fifteen at all. No, no, I I think I think in that sense he's fine. I'm just saying like if you happen to miss a slice and dice or they dead hard it or something like that, um. Or even the scamper, and I know people will once again argue this. You can mess up a scamper. Yeah, you. It's possible. I've done it. <laughs> you can I have it. too. <laughs> you can definitely do it. Um, if you mess it up, they will get so much distance on you. Yeah. Um. 
or god forbid you go for a slice and dice and like you point blank miss it <laughs> so many times Oh god! I, I, yeah, I've done that too as him actually many, many times. Oh my god! I'll like um, I'll uh, slice and dice under a pallet and let go of the button, but apparently I did it like a second too late, and like I'll shoot it, right past them. <laughs> yeah, I've done that many times too. And then I look like a fucking dumbass, and I'm like, okay, I got well, all right, I'll just break the pallet and chase you, I guess. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's like, I, I don't know what people want in this game from killers sometimes. Like, and the thing is, too, with Sadako, um, people are never satisfied with how I play her either. I can have games, like I, like I said earlier, if there's a big map, I won't necessarily focus Condemn. I'll just play her more aggressively. Mm -hmm. And if I play that way and I just go for hooks and I get a 4K without condemns people will still complain and i'm like i wasn't even trying to focus condemn though and you're still complaining i yeah. don't know it's weird i don't I, I, when i was doing chucky with no add-ons no perks i was still getting people being mad at me yeah like at, what what more can i do <laughs> there's i i don't know what to really say to them at this point, like besides, they would be like, get good. <laughs> yeah, they were like, you're 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 so bad. Um, you're playing Chucky. No perks, no add-ons, bro. Like, it, if you lo and no camping or tunneling. I yeah. go, I go out of my way not to do those things. Not that I have if a problem with anyone not doing it or doing it. I'm just saying, like, um, at that point, if they're losing against that, that's kind of on them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's that's just it. <laughs> like I don't, I don't know. Cuz like even like Huntress, Huntress is like arguably agreed to be like a fun killer to play as and against. Mm -hmm. And I know the buffs kind of uh changed that a little bit. But even before the buffs got announced, I saw like sentiment kind of shifting. People started like hating Huntress for like no reason. Yeah, I saw I've seen a couple Huntress mains one of my friends is a big Huntress main. Um, he gets a lot of salt just for playing her as well. And I always just thought it was agreed that she was fun. But yeah. I guess I was wrong about that. Yeah, same with Demogorgon. Uh, Jackie told me this too. Like, he gets a lot of hate for playing Demogorgon. I See, I, I don't understand how someone could hate Demo. I, I love going against Demo. <laughs> because, because the same reason I'm, I'm assuming people hate going against some Huntresses. Uh, because he can zone. That's. I feel like that's like such a. I mean, I understand why people don't like zoning, but I wish they were more specific about that. Because I feel like there are so many killers that can still zone. I mean, I don't know. Clown. It, it, clown can corral. He can't really zone, and people don't really no. complain about that. Sadako actually can kind of zone a little bit. Well, sort of. She can kind of corral like Clown can. Um. Where, like, sometimes if there's a TV pointing towards an area that doesn't have resources, you teleport there, you push them towards that area, mm -hmm. now they have nothing. Yeah. That is that is something you can do as her, and I guess, I don't know, people complain about certain killers when others can kind of do similar things, I think. I mean, people people don't like Pyramid Head because they zone all the time, and one, if it's a good Pyramid Head, they're not, they're not zoning. Uh, mm -hmm. Two, um, the reason so many do it is because missing your M2 is so punishing. Yeah, you kind of have to play safe as Pyramid Head. Yeah, and even if you land... I've said this so many times. Even if you land the M2... Um, let's say you land a max range uh, punishment of the Dandel Pyramid Head. They get mm -hmm. more distance. Yeah. Then, like, compared to, like, if you M1'd them, then you caught up and then M2'd them. Yeah. So what, what do you really gain from M2'ing them? Yeah, it's it's kind of like Chucky too. You're better off just getting that initial hit than entering yeah. your power and downing them. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah. That's that's why like when they did that change on PTB a little while ago, where they um they made it so the the M two also tormented them. Um, oh God, yeah. Here's I remember the thing. That. Yeah, here's the thing about that because I've talked about this many times. I actually think it was an okay idea. Um, I think it should have been an add on, not a base kit thing. Yeah. Um, but 
at, but I do see, I do like what they were trying to do. They were trying to reward you for hitting the M2. Yeah, the idea behind it was great. It's just the execution wasn't wasn't fully it. Yeah, and I think it's a problem with a lot. It's like I, I when I play Deathslinger, I don't always do this before anyone fucking pitchforks me for this. Um, <laughs> I run his add-ons that make him faster with ADS speed when he's ADS, and I mm-hmm. literally just aim. I think. Slinker is another one that if you misses him, oh my god, it's so detrimental. Yeah. Because he he has to reload too, so mm-hmm. I think playing him like that is valid actually for that reason. But yeah, what I'll normally do though is is how you I use I use the fucking Pavlonian thing where like I'll I won't shoot for like most of the match until like everyone's a death hook, then I'll start shooting. Oh, that's kind of funny actually. Be- because <laughs> because they're like, oh, he's not going to shoot. He hasn't shot all game, and then they stop dodging. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gonna start doing that with Huntress. I'm kidding. <laughs> just zoning for like the first half of the match, and then, and then just M1 them, and then towards the end, I'm gonna start chucking shit. <laughs> um, it's yeah, you know, people don't like that, and uh, this has always brought up a really. I, I brought this up before a lot, and I still don't know what the answer is. Is dodging counterplay? Oh, I I remember your Twitter post about this, actually. Um, I feel like to killers like Huntress it is, yeah. In my opinion, it is. Okay, well then that brings in the question, did you dodge it or did they miss? Mmm. Ooh, I don't know if I know the answer to that, And that, that's, that's where the contention of this comes from. That's very true, actually. It's just like with like nurse. It's like, okay, did you dodge the nurse or did she miss? That's true. Hmm. That's why I've always said it's so hard to balance like a killer like that. Because how do you take into account dodging so, versus missing? Rather than counterplay, it's almost like a 50-50 kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Same with, like, Chucky's Slice and Dice. If Chucky misses a Slice and Dice, did he miss it or did you dodge? <laughs> yeah, I... Like... <laughs> and, then that brings, I also... and then that brings in the question of balancing. How do you balance around the fact that a killer might m- miss it or you can dodge it? I think also um, Spirit too is yeah. kind of an example of that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did they mispredict or did you uh, did you uh, predict them? Yeah, exactly. Did you like do a good player? Did they just fuck up? Type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's it, this is this is an argument I've, I've always had, and no one, including myself, has been able to give a good answer. Yeah, I was completely like dumbfounded when you said that. I was like, oh, wait, and wait a minute. <laughs> Because because with Nurse, for an example, it's like, so do you balance around the assumption she will always get a hit? Or, yeah, or do you balance around the idea that she will miss and she she will make mistakes, yeah. Right, and then the question becomes, okay, well, is she's, she's super strong, we've all agreed on this, once you get really good with her. So is that a problem? Hmm. <laughs> That's a that's a that could be a really long discussion, I think. <laughs> Same thing with like Huntress. Huntress to a degree too. It's like, do we balance Huntress around the assumption that the Huntress will never miss? <laughs> I never actually thought about it that way, I will be honest. And once again, and I, I'm not I'm not I'm gonna shoot myself in the foot saying this, like I said a second ago. I don't know the answer either. <laughs> I don't even know if behavior would know the answer to that. I don't that. think any developer does. No. It, it, it's always like like the new killer, the unknown. Like he's gonna be in a similar boat. Oh yeah. That's some true people because... are, some people are gonna get so good with his projectile at very specific at, at a lot of loops, he's going to be virtually uncounterable. Other than dodging, and then the question becomes again: Is dodging counterplay? Oh. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's my reaction. Wow, <laughs> I because I, I, once again, Huntress is usually the one I bring up for this because she's 
mostly for, like beloved um mm-hmm. by both sides of, until recently but um she's mostly beloved by both sides same with demogorgon they both have aspects in their kit where like you can dodge their power but once again it's that brings up, that brings up the question of it was did you dodge or did they miss and then yeah. how do we balance around the, that fact <laughs> <laughs> that's like I, I'm trying to wrap my head around it and it's like wow well because a lot of people like when they talk about killers or survivor or perks or whatever we always have this idealized situation in our head and we're always thinking of like the worst possible Yeah, and I think with killers especially like Huntress like when we're talking about Huntress like, like I said do we just go on the assumption she will never miss and she'll just like hit every snipe and like zone you every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then that brings in the question of projectile speeds and like how far the projectile can travel and the wind up and um, the telegraph and all of this stuff. It's like with Deathslinger. I've said this before with Deathslinger. Deathslinger should not have a notification when he's aiming at you. No. Yeah, I agree with that actually. Um, I think, uh, I don't know who I was talking to, but. After they did the change where he can't insta ADS and shoot, that that sound notification should not be there anymore. Um, yeah, because there's, there's no reason for it anymore at that point. It's like if they, if they don't notice you're shooting at them or aiming at them, um, I don't know. Turn look around like with every other killer you do this for. Yeah. Um, or just frantically dodge. I don't know, man. Like. <laughs> Um, it was zigzag to dodge. <laughs> like, like I said, it's just and when I say that question, like I'm not trying to be dismissive of anybody. I'm just, it's it's a genuine balancing question I have, and I I just I want an answer, and I don't think I'm ever gonna get one. It's I feel like it's such a in depth question with game design that I I I couldn't answer it. I I simply cannot answer it for sure. Um, and like you said, I, I don't think many developers could answer it either. <laughs> and once again, that's why I don't blame Behavior too much for how the game isn't always balanced in the best place, because this no. game is it like has no contemporary. Like there's no yeah. other, there's no other game like it to like look at and balance similar to how they do. I feel like people that set the expectation that everything should be balanced. That's not a reasonable expectation for any game ever. Well, it wouldn't be fun if it was balanced anyways. No, I, I, yeah, I like broken stuff. It is it is fun to have broken stuff in it. I, I think the middle ground, and I've said this so many times, is 6.1 needs to happen more often. Yeah, like a meta shakeup and stuff like, like that. Like, yeah. I'm fine with something being broken, but only for, like, three months or so, and then it's gone. Kind of like what happened with, like, Eruption and stuff. Yeah, like, I'm fine. Like, that was miserable, but but yeah. But, it was. <laughs> but, like, my, my point is, like, I'm fine with, like, this is on top now. It won't be in, like, three months. And yeah. then this next thing is on top now. It won't be in, like, three months. Yeah, we, it, like we went from eruption to like made for this to like grim embrace and etc. Now, yeah, uh, buckle up, uh, yeah, buckle, buckle up, up for the people. people. Yeah, um, which I actually don't even think is OP. I think it's more annoying than anything. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I've always said that. Like, I, I, I want it nerfed, but not because it's super strong. Um, just because I just it's so annoying. Because um, I mean, if if the survivor like vaults something, they they fucked up really bad, and you can grab them. So. Oh yeah, I, I, I like four or five clips of me doing that me too yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite thing i got a comment on that someone was like bro is counting yeah i'm counting what do you mean it's 20 seconds you kind of have to it's 10 oh it's, it's 10 I, why, did I, why did i think it was 20 20 would be insane what the fuck? <laughs> why did i think it was 20 <laughs> god I think. Oh, I think it's because we were talking about Chucky. I thought oh, that's oh, yeah. why I th- twenty was in my head. Yeah, I think I posted a clip yesterday of like the moment I saw them do it. I like you could hear me go one, two, three, three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I I don't know. It's just like, like we just need more meta shakeups more often. I'm not saying all the time. I don't think it has to happen like League of Legends, where like it's every two weeks. No, um, every few months, like you said. Yeah, and I think we're kind of getting there, but I, I don't know. 
it, it's just like with Billy. It's like Billy. People are complaining Billy's OP right now. Um, I think it's fine for now. I think give Billy time to breathe. Honestly, it. I think the same with New Sadako as well. Give those killers time to breathe. It, it, it's, it's not even just that. Like I'm fine with them. Be, like if they are genuinely OP, um, I'm fine with it for a little bit. Yeah, especially Billy. I think he's earned it. But oh yeah, poor um, poor Billy. <laughs> um, but yeah, like if every few months a new killer becomes like the OP killer, and it's not just Nurse and Blight. Like, wouldn't that be better? I think that's more interesting than having the same three meta killers for the past, like, lifespan of the game. Yeah. And, I mean, there's a reason they're, they're meta, obviously. Like, because, you know, the whole idea of, like, mobility. Because, um, you know, people have always asked, why does every killer need mobility? Not even just killer. People ask this in every video game. Why, why is mobility so good? Like, why does everyone want it on every character? There's a few reasons. The big one is it gives you options. Yeah. Um, it gives you, like, especially Valorant. Do you play Valorant? I do not know. So in Valorant, there's a character called Jet. She um she can jump. Uh, she can jump really high with one of her abilities, and she can dash left and right with another. Um, having that immediately gives her one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more options than any other character in the game. Wow, that's a lot of options. Well, because she has one that lets her go up. Yeah. And, and then the dash is multi-directional. So she yeah, she can do a lot of different things so, then. So like if you're if you're if you're if your sights are on one, that's eight to nine options of where she could be in the next half second. Yeah. So that th that gives her options. Same with like, what? Go ahead. I was gonna say I think that's also why I actually love Sadako as well, because um, there's like sometimes I have like the uh, the option to either chase somebody or teleport away, and I think having that is always nice because with some killers you kind of have to chase, otherwise you're calling yourself across the map. Yeah. And if you're one ten, you're going across the map as a one ten, and you. You have to just dedicate to those chases. And I feel like Sadako and like other micromanaging killers can get away with doing a little more, which I like more. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it, it's just... I said earlier, like people don't like being forced to do something. Yeah. And a lot of killers kind of do that. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, like Wraith, like, Wraith, I think, is a good example. Um... He's like, I understand there are people who are really good with Wraith and make him look better than he is. At the end of the day, though, he is still just an M1 killer. With yeah. Not with like his power is he turns invisible. Like he doesn't really have like you can't like do like a sick play with him, really. Not really. No, that, that you couldn't just do with another killer. And that's the other thing with mobility and why everyone loves mobility. It looks cool. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Um. It doesn't even like, matter if it feels cool or is good. It looks cool as shit. Like getting a good hit out of a TV is something I find very satisfying. And even with like, I think with unknown, like the delusions. Oh, yeah. 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 I have a few clips that I need to post. Um. But uh, it, like even with like range killers, it's like you can montage that shit. <laughs> Exactly, you can show off like your skill with those killers. Yeah, and once again, because a lot of like like Wraith, a lot of the skill is like behind the scenes subconscious stuff. Yeah, you can't really like display that too much. Yeah, um, exactly. I think that's the problem with so many killers in this game. They're just like, <laughs> like, are you really gonna see a, a montage of Trapper? It's literally just gonna be people walking into traps. Freddy Montage. <laughs> hey, someone did one. Someone did a really good one. I actually remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but, 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 I, I always bring this up with that. If he didn't have the clips, like the, the, the dumb jokes, the memes, and like the music, um, it wouldn't be a montage. It wouldn't yeah. really be a montage, which someone could argue, well, what, what is a montage? To me, the sign of a good montage is if you don't need any other thing but the base footage to look mm -hmm. cool. And the, the other stuff is just enhancing it, not making it. 
Yeah, like uh, most of it is just your your raw like gameplay, and yeah. then there's the additional stuff that's mm-hmm. added onto it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, do you know Grim Gatsby? No, he does. Uh, uh, he he does montages. At least he used to for like every killer. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, he did one for Sadako on PTB when when a while when she was first released. Um, it, it's actually really really good, but uh. You know, it was old Sadako, and this is before anyone knew anything, really. So, like, mm-hmm. it's not the most, like, engaging thing to watch. <laughs> Once again, a, I... lo- a lot of it comes down to how he edits and the music and, you know, the clips, not necessarily the actual footage. Yeah, all of that, like, I think makes it entertaining. And it's, like you said, not the actual clips themselves that is making it entertaining. Well, yeah, because I mean, I post I post slice and dice hits all the time, and you know, I know people say the skill ceiling still isn't there, but some of them are still cool. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, some slice and dice hits are actually really satisfying. I think. Yeah, like the one I got the other day on Gideon's on the two god palettes. Yeah, stuff like that is really satisfying uh, with Chucky. Yeah, arguably they could have just moved to the left and I would have dodged, but they would have dodged it. But still, <laughs> it was, I, <laughs> I hit it. That's what matters. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like mobility just allows for like cool clips and like it actually has a tangible skill to show. And it's because like like I think that's another problem with like Skull Merchant. Um, because I mean we've proven based on Pixel Bus's video yesterday. Yeah. Um, she has a lot of skill to her. If you want it's, it, it's just a lot of it is the actual thinking the player has to put into it mm-hmm. rather than what is like being displayed, like what you said with Wraith. Yeah. And, and I think Sadako has some of that too, actually. A lot of it more is the thinking than what is being displayed. Right. Uh, Freddy has that, I think, too. Well, probably not as much. Freddy's his own beast. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, how many Freddy players do you know? Who, how many Freddy players do you know? Um, how many uh, Freddy players do you know who uh, like pay attention and remember where the alarm clocks are? I will be completely honest with you. <laughs> zero. I am so serious. Zero. I do it. I do it when I play them. Um, it's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's just like with Pig. It's like they they buffed her ambush and. I love it because it means more people might play her because while I do kind of agree the bear traps didn't need to be nerfed, I was fine with it being mm-hmm. nerfed in compensation. Because Oh yeah, the the dash changes were really good actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um honestly, she might just be better Chucky at this point. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh no. I'm kidding. <laughs> there's, there's She will never be Chucky. <laughs> there's there's the joke that like Chucky is just better pig. <laughs> Like when you really think about it, he pretty much is. He just doesn't have any slowdown. When I mean, if you think about it, Sadako is basically better pig traps. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Wow, yeah. she's basically better. Just they're better constant in that sense. too. Yeah, you can never run out. <laughs> and she could, she can. Oh my god, she can like get people out of the game way faster than pig can if. She, Condemn happens. Could you imagine if they were condemned and they leave the exit gate, they just die? <laughs> <laughs> they should rework Eerie Tape to that. No kidding. <laughs> you know what they could do? Uh, uh, they could add uh, Eerie Tape and make it so if they're condemned, uh, it gives them a Blood Warden effect for like 15 seconds. I actually saw that get suggested once, I think. That would be kind of cool. Um... Yeah, because they did they did that with night. Uh, I was gonna say it's like the night out on yeah. Yeah, and uh, Freddy has his that no one remembers ever. Oh uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> people always forget about that. Add-on. And it's like it's... it's like his best add on. God, I think everyone just forgets everything about Freddy. <laughs> listen, listen, and, and I'm gonna say this is good. once again the Freddy episode comes out before this, but if anyone watching in the future, um, if you're mad at who I got for Freddy. Go find me a Freddy man. They're they're like a shiny Pokemon. They're so rare. <laughs> I say I keep saying this with some of some of these killers, man. Like, if y'all want me to get someone quote better, go find them for me. Exactly. Right? 
If you know somebody, call them up. <laughs> like for real, like like, and I, once again, not just Joe Schmo on the street. It has to be a content creator of some kind, please. Yeah, um, like, even if they just post on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't care. It's just someone like I can get some validity to, you know. Yeah. Um. And it also like helps me like under like kind of vet people before I bring them on here. <laughs> I'm just gonna bring some random stranger I've never heard of on here. Oh yeah, like some random person with like a blank profile. Yeah, like that... like no, nah, dude. You're like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care if you have three thousand hours on Doctor. I'm not no. <laughs> three thousand hours on Doctor. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's just I don't know. T- talking about the balance of the game, though, is, is always interesting. And I, I think people get the wrong idea when I talk about balance because I don't want this game to be hyper competitive. No, I don't either. Um, um yeah it's just a matter of like i see something that probably shouldn't exist or probably should be better and i want it changed that's that's really all it comes yeah. down to it's not a matter of like i think this should do this because i want the game in like a competitive state i i feel like people also just take balancing the wrong way like you said type of thing they they like hear you want something nerfed and they immediately think oh so you want this to be terrible no if it's if it's like really strong you just want it to be fair yeah it's like uh, you know i'm a huge advocate for nerfing scamper i don't want it deleted i just yeah want it to not be as good as it is that's a perfect example actually um I, i i even as a chucky player and most most chucky players will admit scamper should be nerfed yeah, because um, it's really strong. It's really strong. It's really boring, and a lot of times it feels like it's the only thing we can do. Um, so we want it nerfed and slice and dice buffed. It's it's just that simple. It has nothing to do with I want to win my games more. If, if I scamper brain the entire match, I can probably win more games. Yeah, I just scamper. I don't know. It's it's funny because I I think it was Pixel that brought it up, comparing like Skull Merchant to chucky in that sense where it's like okay but if they're complaining so much about school merchant what about scamper if they're talking about free stuff i mean people do (laughs) yeah like true they they do complain about scamper but i don't feel like they complain about it on the same level as like school merchant though i don't know some of the people in my chat would disagree with that okay (laughs) (laughs) the problems of play it's funny i've talked about this i went from when I first started playing this game, I mained Pig. Uh, mm. So people hated me for that. Then I started, play- then I started playing Deathslinger. It was before the ADS change. Um, people hated me for that. Um, then I started playing Clown. People hated me for that. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> then I started playing Knight. People hated me for that. <laughs> then I started <laughs> playing Skull Merchant, and people hated me for that. I like oh, I don't know what it is. I think I'm just drawn to characters people just hate. I feel that. I I really feel that with with Sadako and Skull Merchant. I I like Skull Merchant actually. Mm-hmm. Um what else? Chucky. Chucky Nurse. I love Nurse. Um uh Huntress recently, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, I've gone on record saying the reason I enjoy Chucky isn't the slice and dice. It's not the scamper. It's Chuck spots. Yeah. But I also love the franchise. It's, it's a part of it, too. But I, I would. Yeah, but, I was just going to say that. Yeah, but, but Chuck spots. Chuck spots are my favorite thing with him. And it's like the one thing no one talks about. Because <laughs> it's funny to just, just like stand still at a corner and like watch them with your camera and watch them like panic. Yeah. I love doing that as him. Yeah, the way I always put it is it makes you feel smart without doing anything. <laughs> yeah. It makes you feel like you did like this awesome mind game when all you do is <laughs> It's 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 giving sp- like old spirit a little bit, which you would like stand still. <laughs> um, that's why I tell Just, people if you want to counterplay Chucky, if you cannot see him and you know he's in Heidi Ho, stop moving. Yeah, <laughs> he wants you to panic. Right, he's he's playing the the mental gymnastics with you. You gotta stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'll just run away from the loop. No, he's holding a chuck spot. He will see you leave on either side. That's the whole point. 
and he'll walk towards you with slice and dice, and you're gonna get hit. <laughs> yeah, if you stand behind the corner and like, it's either either you stand still, or you I don't know how to describe this, but you walk away from the loop, but perpendicularly. Yeah, like you don't go left or right. You like go away from the loop the other way. You like you yeah you step away like the opposite side of like what's in front of you. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, do those two things, and I promise you, he won't get you with the check spots. As for Scamper, <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying this till the fucking cows come home. Stop pre-dropping pallets against Chucky. It's the same for Sadako too. <laughs> the the difference though. Because with with Sadako, we were talking about it. It's you're just helping her get rid of resources for later. Mm-hmm. With Chucky, pre dropping the pallet helps him. <laughs> that I was gonna say that I was gonna say like pre dropping against Chucky, it's not gonna do anything because you're just giving him an opportunity to scamper and hit you, like you you're suggesting basically. Yeah, yeah. like I've had people who know not to do it and i can't do anything against them yeah because you're 110 <laughs> i think also like because like when i go against chucky i'll sometimes play against him like huntress where i'll like fake dropping it and make him panic a little bit yeah and then like drop it when he doesn't expect it and maybe knock him out of his power mm -hmm. i think that's like how people should play against him yeah and then for dodging slice and dice i there's no real, like, definitive way to do it, but I promise you if you run into him when he does it, he will miss most of the time. <laughs> that is what always makes me miss. Um, it's, like, like, it's like, yeah. At least the first couple, because you have to release the button. So if they run into you at an unexpected time, you're not going to release it fast enough. Yeah, because you have to react, so yeah. it's, it, yeah. Um, unless it's, like, right at the tip, and then never mind. Uh, <laughs> everything I just said is irrelevant. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't. What, what were we even talking about? I don't even remember. I don't. I don't even know. It's okay. I love this podcast. That's why I love this podcast. Um. Yeah. Oh, it's it, been fun. Ir iridescent tape. We were talking about iridescent tape oh. on Sonic on mobility. Yeah. Um. And why like mobility killers? Yeah. Why people don't understand them? Basically, I think we were talking about. Well, no, yeah. no, not understand them, but like why people like want mobility on like. Or yeah, like killer. why people want yeah. Because I've, I've, um, I know someone's, uh, there's someone in my comment section, I forget their name, uh, they brought it up a few times, um, and they were actually, they're actually surprised that I remembered their comment, but, uh, someone suggested that trappers should be able to teleport to his traps once someone's in them. That, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think I've, I've heard that suggested with twins, too, where Charlotte, like, teleports to Victor. Uh, like I said, I think, like, if they do the Chucky thing, where, like, once they're down, she can do it, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, not every killer can be Oni. <laughs> All right, not every no. killer can be Wesker. Not every killer, like, some killers don't need mobility, not because it wouldn't be good on them, just because, it, it, like, not every killer needs to be a dash killer. Yeah, no, I agree. It's it just, it, 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 it's just less fun. And that's that's why I don't think Sadako should ever really have a strong chase power. I like her as sort of a a weaker M1 killer that can turn the game around you on really quickly if you aren't paying close enough attention to condemn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. think that's what makes her so fun, really. Yeah. Um. So last question. Uh. Stats. Um. I don't know if you use DB Tracker or not, but uh. Do you have hmm. any stats on Sadako? Uh, I mean, I have the amount of condemns that I have, but that's really it. That, is that the only one tracked? I think so, yes. Okay. What, what, um, what's it at? <laughs> I'm just curious. Let me go look. Let me go look real quick. I am currently at 26,000 condemns. What's your... And I, my spot... In, let's see... If, I am currently top 10. Are you serious? Yep. <laughs> uh, God, I play her a lot. <laughs> God. Uh, I talk about Chucky's track stat a lot because I hate it. Oh, yeah. Chucky's is so weird. Why? I don't. I hate Chucky's so much. Well, I'm convinced I'll never nerf Scamper. 
Yeah. Why isn't it like just slice and dice? Slice and dice. Yeah. I don't know. Hates us. I don't know. (laughs) The the twins one is so weird too. What is twins? Hitting people with Victor clinging to them. What? Yeah, it's survivors down while Victor's clinging to them. That's the stat. Why isn't it just hitting survivors with Victor? I don't know. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) God, some of these make no fucking sense. I swear. It's so funny, too, because when you like click on the twins one, the numbers are so fucking low because no one does that half no. of the time. Who's number one? Uh, let me look. Uh, Linux. Or, uh, I don't Linksy. know how I pronounce Linksy? it. Linksy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I figured. Okay. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, sorry. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I wonder. I wonder who's coming on for the for the twins interview. I wonder. Um, hmm. <laughs> you know, I know I'm joking here. This is at the end of the video, so no one's gonna watch it anyways. But um, I I always joke where I'm like, no one like I try not to give away who I'm bringing on, and I I find it funny because the twins won. No one's guessed it somehow, but uh, I don't know how. Like I have like what two options and one of them has already been on yeah <laughs> like, i am actually friends with a twins main funnily enough um uh, so i guess that's three <laughs> like like i said i've said it so many times there are some of these killers where it's like there's only one option like honestly yeah. speaking um and then there's like huntress where you have eighty thousand options <laughs> <laughs> uh I know who I want, and if they're listening to this, Coconut, my DMs are open. <laughs> uh, it'll never happen. But you know. Same with Trapper. Ots, if you're listening. <laughs> oh, Ots would be awesome. Ots is who I want for Trapper. Some, someone suggested I get Ots on once they're all done. <laughs> like, I think that would be a cool idea, actually. Yeah. yeah, he'll never respond to me, though. It'll never happen. Um, I'll, I'll, I'd love to eat my words, but it'll never happen. I'll also be so starstruck, I probably won't even talk. So. <laughs> uh, P- Pixel, I know you watch these videos, too. I want you to know it was such a struggle to talk during that one. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was so weird. It, it th- This series has been so weird to do. Um, and I, I know I'm getting a little meta with this and talking behind the scenes, but there are some people I didn't think would give me the light of fucking day who have come onto the stream, uh, come on to do this. It's really cool that yeah. you got so many people to do it. People just like talking about their favorite, their killer. That's all it is. Yeah, that that's that's exactly why I wanted to do it too. Really. Yeah. I was like, oh, I could talk about Sadako. Yeah, and, and especially for like like Pixel the Skull Merchant, like he just he just likes talking about Skull Merchant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's 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 just it. <laughs> um, and I caught him at a great time because it was you know while he was working on the guide still, so it's like. Yeah, he, he all of it was fresh in his mind, you know. A lot of people were still hating on her at the, at the moment, still are. Um, I was just gonna say that's <laughs> never gonna end, probably. I think even if they made her like, if they copy and paste her, pasted Wesker onto Skull Merchant, people would still hate her. <laughs> I am convinced oh. that they, it's just like PTSD. I'm convinced. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I am convinced as well. Um, to a degree, but yeah. You know. Um, I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say. I almost feel like that's something similar with Sadako too. Actually, people are just, just remember like being slugged with condemn, and the moment they see like their condemn go up, they're like, "Oh my god, I hate this killer." Well, I mean, I think another thing with it is like, um, I I think Billy is another example of this where people pe- and Chucky kind of, you know, people come to me and complain like all Chucky mains do is just uh they they camp and they slug. And they tunnel people out. And it's like, that's not a Chucky problem. Mm -mm. That's a player problem. Like, don't blame the killer because of how someone wants to play. And, yeah. No, don't get me. Go on, sorry. I was going to say, the the funny thing is they, they take, like, how one person plays and they just summarize it as, like, every one of that killer plays that way, basically. Yeah, it's like, it's like Bubba. Bubba, tu- B- Bubba camps and tunnels. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say none of them do it. You know, a, a lot do. 
Um, it, also, part of it comes down to some powers are just better at doing it. Yeah, like, exactly. Chucky camps. Um, I know a lot of Chucky's camp. Uh, so not some of the better ones, but you know, a, a lot of Chucky's camp. And the reason why is because his power is very good at camping. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, he can go undetectable and hide nearby, like behind a rock. And yeah, exactly. And I feel like with Sadako too, um, people complain about her tunneling. And the thing is, though, if like, for example, I, I literally did this tonight. If I hook somebody with high condemn, they get unhooked. I teleport. They get fully condemned. I'm going to go for them. Right. It's like, it's like I, I know it's tunneling, but why would I not go for them? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It, it, it's just like with like, um, with like Myers and Tombstone, like I really do think they need to change it, but it's like, I didn't feed the Myers at all. Why am I dying? Yeah. It's just how the power works. Like he is nothing malicious. It wasn't like, no, literally he wasn't targeting you. You just said he wasn't. So that's just how it's designed. <laughs> yeah. It should be changed. Don't get me wrong, but. Oh yeah. Or, or like Hillbilly with slugging or Oni with slugging or twins with slugging. Their kits are very good at it. Oh god, when I hear people complaining about Oni and Twin slugging, I'm like, what What do you expect them to do? <laughs> like, I run an infectious on Oni to slug. That's the whole point. So I get yeah, exactly. the most value out of my power. Like, it's like they'll expect Oni to like use a little bit of his power, get it down, then instantly pick. Like, no, that's not what he's gonna do. He's gonna get the most value out of the power that he had to work for. Yeah, and same with twins. It's like, what, why do twins slug so much? I, partially because they're clunky, but, like, it, it, it takes so long to get back to Charlotte and come over and pick somebody up. Why wouldn't oh. they just slug? Oh, God, it takes, like, 50 years to get back to Survivors with Charlotte. Yeah. If, especially if it's a big map, too. <laughs> what if they just give her, like, like a 300... Like, give, give, give Charlotte background player um, <laughs> when, when Victor downed <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Ima imagine Charlotte just like sprinting across the map. <laughs> she gets the Wesker animation. Just do it. Do it. The, what, the animation's there, behavior. Do it. Oh, man. Or like the Nemesis animation. <laughs> <laughs> it does the chase theme, too. <laughs> She's rapidly approaching the Victor's location. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you've um, played Twins very much, but. Um... Oh wait! Well, yeah, you said you were main, right, for a little bit. I I uh, play twins on the side a little bit. Yeah, uh, you know they're like a secondary. You know how Charlotte does like that noise when she walks. Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine that, but like three hundred percent speed. <laughs> <laughs> I think um one of the skins actually changes that noise. I think it's the um the art skin. I can't remember what it was called. Oh, the, I guess, the pirate looking one? No, the other one. Like the bony looking one. Oh. Yeah, it like changes it to like a bone sound. I really wish it wasn't there. <laughs> Me too. I hate it. <laughs> um, that's the real reason no one plays twins. <laughs> Clearly. I don't know. I, I mean, I said it before, like uh, mirror shards on Chucky. I, I, I will vehemently despise this that add on forever until it's changed. Yeah, because I don't of you. because of the noise, <laughs> I am cool hey. with seeing the footsteps. Why the fuck do I have to hear them too? <laughs> you just get like, I don't know. I don't know what their thought process was behind that. Like, just like I, their patterns. I've, I've tested it a little bit. Um, it is useful for tracking if you know how to read it. Uh. But if you don't, it's it just doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um it's just it's so bad. It it's like overstimulation, I think. Yeah, it's just like like once again, if it was just a visual, I would still say it's bad, but I wouldn't hate it. Yeah. But because it does the noise too, like I vehemently hate that at all. Yeah, I don't blame you. Like the amount, like I've I've tried running it, and the amount of times I've like lost a survivor because I hear footsteps behind me. Oh man, yeah, that's really like just like I said, overstimulating. Yeah, it's like the fucking fire barrels on Asylum. 
Oh lord, yeah. <laughs> or the god, yeah. I swear, I'm the only person who complains about this. The fucking vultures on Dead Dog. <laughs> I please remove them. I'm trying to think. There is something similar that I've had an issue with on one of the maps. I can't think of what it is. Is it? Oh, I th- I think it's Midwitch with like the the bodies and shit. Sometimes yeah. those bother me a little bit. Oh my god! It like or Toba. I get like genuinely jump scared by some of the sounds on Toba. Oh yeah, like Toba has all the bug sounds and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. just lower them. Like I'm fine with them being there, but God, do they have to be so fucking loud? Um. Yeah. It, it's it's so strange. Like like I said, but um, <laughs> it's just like some of the sounds and the sound design in this game. It's great. Um, like atmospherically, it's great. Gameplay wise, it's, it's so. Oh, the I I remember what thing I have an issue with Larry's that main like the main area once that gen gets done. Oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Once all the teams oh, turn god. on. Oh god! Yeah, it, it's mm. that's so that overstimulates me so badly. If I'm playing on Larry's, I hate it. Considering it's Doctor's map, I think that makes sense. True. <laughs> Speaking of Doctor, can we talk about how they did the accessibility change for for Clown, but they didn't do it for Doctor? That bothers me a lot, yeah. Like, I was really, like, I saw those two in the list together, and I was like, oh, they're gonna fix both of them that way. <laughs> nope. Only one. Yeah. I don't know. Once again, this is coming from someone who doesn't get affected by that stuff. Like, okay, you can probably... Um, you, you could probably tone those down a bit. <laughs> yeah, Doctor... Like... I don't mind Doctor as much as I did Clown... But the sound effects that Doctor has, like especially once you're like tier three, I think could be toned down a little bit. Cause yeah. stuff like that, it it does get really overwhelming. It mm. it does overstimulate players I, a lot. I think I, I'm doing a video about this later, and this is kind of on the same note. I know a lot of people won't play Alan Wake because of his voice lines. Um, do you think there should be a toggle for voice lines? Yeah, I think so. Cause, Cause, even Sable has uh, quite a few now. I I think giving people the option is always a good idea. Yeah, I mean, with anything, I th- especially in the video game, I think I think options are always great. Um, yeah, for stuff like that, I do think like some are pushing it a little. I've already, I, I don't know exactly how much the sentiment is on like phobia filters. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, I've always been in the camp of I don't think they belong in this game. Um, while I agree more people should be able to play the game at the same time, I think there is a limit on, like... I think, like, they could do some minimal stuff. Like, I think, uh, disabling, like, Plague's puking sounds would be okay. I, I stuff think, like that. I think that one's fun. Only for the player, not, like, in general. Yeah, like, just for the player. Yeah, because yeah. Again, same with, like, Nemesis with coughing. No yeah. one, no one really brings that one up, but I know it's a problem for some people. Yeah, I think like just disabling it for the individual player as a setting is fine. Mm-hmm. But because yeah, because Plague uses it at the track, and so does Nemesis. So like, yeah. Um, but yeah, but like, like I don't know. I've seen a lot of people suggest like there should be a filter for Clown. Um, there should be a filter. I've heard some people suggest there should be a filter for her artist. Hmm. Um, and it's like, we're, well, I, you know, and I know like people will say it's a slippery slope argument, but my question is always like, how, like, do we only like focus on the common phobias? And you know, the, the thing is too, the, the elephant in the room, if you will, when it's people a, talk about phobias is we, <laughs> we literally have clown <laughs> clown is literally like colophobia is literally like a thing and we have clown and it, like you said it's a horror game and so i feel like give the players options to disable certain things like puking sounds from plague but don't make it so much yeah i mean i, I know there's a reason they're not adding a spider a spider killer ever um, yeah at the same time i've kind of like but I understand why they're not doing it, and I understand why people don't want it, but at the same time, it's like, man, that kind of limits it a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, I still think a spider killer would be cool, and I have arachnophobia. <laughs> well, I think there's also, you know, 
is the idea of a degree of separation, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that also has to be taken into account. I mean, I have immense... Uh, God, what the fuck is it called? Um, it's a long one. It's like trileptophobia. It's the fear of open water. Oh, okay. Um, I can't play uh, Subnautica. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like... have tried so many times, I will literally have a panic attack playing it. Yeah. Um, and it's a me thing, but, like, I don't demand them to, like, add a setting, because that would kill the game. Like, it wouldn't I even had... be the same game. Yeah, because it's that entire game space is underwater. And it's like in a game like this, it's like it's a horror game. It's like, and don't get me wrong, yeah. some of the settings I understand, like the actual, like like a accessibility settings for like motion sickness and things like that, or like the vomiting thing. This is that's not really a phobia. That's more so just like an, a reaction. Yeah. Um, those I understand, but like like I said, like phobia filters, I, I think would be too much. Um, I have a kind of a niche one actually. I have uh, well, it's not niche, but it's a niche example. I have a pretty extreme trypophobia is and it, the circle one. Yeah, the fear of holes yeah. and that one new hag skin they added, the one with like the like the I don't know what it is, like the mushroom head thing. Yeah. That skin has like a bunch of holes in it and when I looked at it, I was <laughs> like, "Okay, I can't look at that skin ever." But I don't expect them to add a setting to remove, like, the holes on the skin. That's yeah. just dumb. I mean, fuck, Unknown has uh, holes in his neck. Yeah, that bothers me a little bit, too, but I'll deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, like, like I think I think that's what... And that's, this isn't to dismiss anyone who wants it. It's just, like... No. I'm just asking the question, right? It's, like, how far do we go with it? And I know that's a slippery slope argument, but it, it, it's a genuine question. It's like with twins. I'm sure twins probably the body horror aspect probably fucks some people up. Oh yeah. Definitely. And I think also uh if okay, this is kind of a funny example sort of, but like with Chucky too, if they have like an actual fear of dolls with like Chucky or the dredge skin too. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't know. I I feel like it it definitely ha is a slippery slope a little bit. Yeah, and it's like at what point do like and with the license killers, I think it, uh, Chucky, for example, um, would they are they even allowed to filter it? Probably not. I I don't think they would be able to without like permission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the spider killer is from eight crazy free or eight legged freaks or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get a licensed spider killer. <laughs> Come on, it's Quaylag from Dark Souls. <laughs> you know what? Actually, I think if Quaylag got added from Dark Souls, I don't think people would care. I think people would love it. Actually, true. Yeah, I think actually behavior making an original Spider Killer would bother people more because they would have more creative like liberties over yeah. what it would look like and mm -hmm. stuff. I don't. I don't know. Once again, and I know. Once again, because I, 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 I read my comments. I, I know because I talked about it in the clown video. I know people have very strong opinions on the whole idea of a phobia filter. I just, I think there is a limit. Yeah, because it's a horror game, like you said. I think that's that's the base of it. Yeah. I think there there is room for uh, certain settings in accessibility, but it isn't something that you can take super far right. with DVD. Right, and this is nothing against my my paraplegic people, but it's like if you have broken fingers, should it, do the game devs have an obligation to make to make the game accessible for you? Exactly. Yeah. And like, and, and not to say they they don't they shouldn't be able to play video games. I'm just saying like the devs have no. Other than like a personal reason to do it, they they have no obligation. And I know it's a touchy subject sometimes, but yeah, yeah no, I I agree with with what you mean. I get what you mean there, because th I think the devs can only do so much mm -hmm. for so many people. I think, and I think it's people can't exactly blame them when something isn't there. I guess when like a certain setting or something isn't there mm -hmm. because 
especially if it's like kind of a niche thing. Um, I I think behavior is getting a little better with it, and I I do think that more settings like that would be nice as long as they don't take it too far, like we've discussed. Yeah, and you know the FOV slider just came in, and that that's been helping people, with, some people with motion sickness. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, because like like even TCM, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I don't know if they even have added it. There's no motion blur setting. No, I don't think so. Which, to me, like, as much as, like, I, I sympathize with the uh, accessibility issues of that, that's not even an accessibility issue, in my, in my opinion. That's that's just a... Why is that not an option in general? That's usually an option in, like, all games. <laughs> Every video game ever in the past ten Ex- years? Exactly, yeah. Um, I always turn motion blur off. It's not I because I get, I get motion sickness. I just don't like how it looks. Yeah, motion blur. I just think it looks ugly, to be honest. It, uh, it looks good in trailers. I I think, yeah, it looks good in like trailers, but gameplay, I don't like it. That, that, that's, that's, motion blur is one of those weird uh, situations where it looks good to look at, not to play with. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's It's similar to a degree like higher FPS. Uh, there is oh, a yeah. point, and someone's going to fucking debate me on this, there is a point with frames per second where it doesn't actually really do anything for someone watching. But well, for someone, like, playing, but yeah. But to someone playing, it makes a massive difference. Um, yeah. On top of that, I always say this, uh, because... Uh, my, one of my favorite things is when someone's like, "I uh, yeah, I, I, I play this game at, like, 240 FPS, and then I find out their monitor is only 60 hertz. <laughs> and then I'm like, S- okay, sure. Uh, how's how's that going for you? <laughs> it's like, okay, sure, sure thing, dude. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you're really getting those crisp frames. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my monitor is only 60 hertz. That's why Mine I, is too. Yeah, that's why I don't care about FPS that much. I I I'm just used to 60. I've played on 60 for so many years that I, I'm just used to it. <laughs> I have I have a weird opinion on fps where i don't care what it is as long as it's consistent and it's not dropping yeah yeah like if it if a game plays at 12 fps i actually don't really give a fuck like i'm i'll play it as long as it stays at 12 fps i agree yeah (laughs) um (laughs) it's like with 30 like people it's always the debate of 30 versus 60 i say debate it's not really a debate but my point has always been, I don't care if a game is at 30 FPS, as long as it's always 30 FPS. Exactly. <laughs> if it's jumping from 30 to 45 to 20 to 30 to 20 to 40, like, if it keeps oh. doing that, like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking have some problems, but if it's only That's... 30, like, fine, whatever. Yeah. Inconsistent FPS is way worse than, like, lower consistent FPS, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I, I don't know, there was that debate a little while ago on, um, if anything higher than 60 even matters in Dead by Daylight. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this game is not fast-paced enough for anything above 30 to matter. I think, like, I I think it was with Wesker, there was, like, something weird with FPS that you could, like, do a tech with. Um, I know it was with Huntress, too, with, like, Orbitals. If you're on, like, higher FPS, the Orbitals would be different. But yeah, stuff yeah. like that is so niche. Yeah, there's also, like, some games like that. Like, uh, the original Dead Space is guilty of this. The physics are tied to your frames. Hmm. So if you're playing the game on, like, really high frames per second, because it's a, 2000, a game from 2008, um, so, you know, most modern computers can run it at, like, 240, um, yeah. it will, like, break the game's physics. Oh, <laughs> um. So you have to like install a patch to fix it, an unofficial patch. Um. It's also Damn. it's also tied to your. It's really weird. The the FPS is tied to your mouse sensitivity. For what? some reason, so like if you're playing at like really high like really high FPS, your mouse sensitivity is like super slow. That is really really weird. Yeah, it, it's not the only game like that, but it, it's one of like the big offenders of it. Um, once again, you got to install a patch to fix it. It's very weird. That um, yeah, very what, very weird. Once again, yeah. I mean, the, the FPS debate is going to be one that goes on forever. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, whatever works for you. 
That's basically, that's yeah. <laughs> what it comes down to. I, I played consoles my whole life. I'm used to 30 FPS. I don't care. I've been, I've been exactly. in the trenches. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And I still don't really notice a difference. <laughs> like, I've played on low FPS many for like many years when I was a laptop gamer. I, I definitely oh, get it. <laughs> I used to play League on um I used to play League on 25 FPS. Oh my god. When I jumped up to 60, uh when I got my actual PC, I noticed the difference for sure. Um mm-hmm. I can play it at 120 now. I I still don't notice the difference between 60 and 120. I really don't. Yeah. Um, I think like yeah whatever works for you is what you should stick with for yeah, sure yeah th- there's also like a, a points where like it's just you're just doing it to get the numbers up <laughs> yeah um which is cool if that's your prerogative go ahead mm-hmm. um, but don't say a game is unplayable because it's not at 60 fps please <laughs> yeah um yeah because i hear that so much oh yeah and i hear people like that are like kind of weird about people that play in 60 fps they're like imagine playing on 60 fps and it's like dude i prefer 60 60 <laughs> is the industry standard you're exactly oh well it's 120 now uh, is oh, it really yeah yeah 120 124k is the industry standard oh well okay yeah even though most people don't have 4k monitors or tvs <laughs> that's what a standard i guess yeah yeah, someone's going to correct me on that. And technically, it's one or the other with the option. Um, because a lot of, like, PlayStation 5 games have, like, a performance mode where it mm-hmm. drops it, it drops the, the, the 4K down, but it plays at a higher frame rate. That makes sense. Or yeah. the opposite, it plays at a lower frames, but the epic, but the but it's at 4K. Um, huh, I didn't know it was 120 or above that. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, it's usually about 60, it just depends on the game, but yeah, a lot of people yeah. demand like, the game should have the option for 120, at least. I mean, I do agree it should be, like, an option. I mean, it always should. I, I think, like, limiting FPS in any game is just bad. I don't know why you would. <laughs> if my rig DVD can... DVD years. Yeah, if my rig can run it, why not? Um, yeah. Because that, that brings it... But then, then the discussion of... Uh, you know, competitive advantage comes in, and it's like, okay. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's our, a, that's a slope to go down to. What do you mean? Are fil- our filters are our filters an unfair advantage? No. <laughs> <laughs> I put so so many people on the spot with that question. I appreciate you just answering it. I just go no. <laughs> I always be. I'm always like, if filters are an unfair advantage, headphones are an unfair advantage. Oh, God. By definition. Because people are like, no, filters are an unfair advantage because it's not in the game. Neither are my headphones. Yeah, like, if if you're playing against someone that isn't using headphones, but you have headphones, that's that's a competitive advantage, clearly. Yeah. Oh, well, console it's... players. Bro, I have one of the shittiest TVs I can think of. Do you know how many settings it has to fix, like, to change how it looks? I can put Many. filters on my TV if I wanted to. I just don't. Oh my god. <laughs> what? That's like because like I was just going to say um there's I think a lot of people do have those fil- those have those have those settings and they still complain about filters. <laughs> yeah, it's like if you're really that mad about it, you can probably yeah. do it. Most TVs made after 2010 have like so many settings. Yeah, and I think like they, I don't know. They but, just complain about filters. Complain well, about once filters. again, also on the topic of filters, um, remember how I recommended you those glasses earlier, the Gunner ones? Yeah. Um, like I said, that has the same effect as like eye saver mode. Yeah. Which eye saver mode is technically a filter. So technically, eye saver mode would be a competitive advantage. So with those glasses, <laughs> by that definition. God. <laughs> That's where it's like, where where do we draw the fucking line? It's it, it's such a weird discourse. It really is. In my opinion, if it doesn't outright play the game for you, it's fine. Exactly. And most people use filters just to make the game look better. That's what I use it for. Stretch res, that's a different story. 
Okay, yeah, that's... Like, that's yeah. doing something the game doesn't do now. Like, okay, let me rephrase that. That's doing that, something the game couldn't do on its own. That is, in my opinion, Stretch Res was a competitive advantage. Yeah. For um, that reason. Yeah, because it's like with filters, it's like, people are like, oh, they use it so they can see better. Well, yeah, like, if they had better eyes, then the filters wouldn't be needed. Exactly. Some Just people are get... blind as shit like I am, like... Same, I'm blind as shit too. Um, I guess their response to us is just get better eyes for head. <laughs> I guess. It's, it's like, uh, who was it? Like, there's like a, uh, uh, someone who plays this game, uh, they're like a prominent streamer. They're, they're deaf. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and like they, they use, um, they use some programs to help them. Yeah. Is that a competitive advantage? Oh, my God. According to some people, it is. <laughs> <laughs> they just the slope keeps going down more and more and more. This is yeah. This is why like 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 my videos are like five minutes. If I really wanted to, I could probably stretch some of these discussions to like an hour. Yeah, you probably could because the 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 lengths that people will go to defend or to like defend like why it's competitive advantage. Ugh. Yeah, and then they'll make an exception. Yeah. And then it's like, well, you can't. If you can make an exception, then I can make an exception. Like, no, no, it, no your exception doesn't count. And then their entire argument just falls apart because of that. It's like, okay, okay. All right, man. I, I guess we'll just not discuss this then. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that, there's a word. It's not straw manning. There's another word for it, and I forget what it is. I learned, I forgot what it is. I learned this in my, my college writing class. It's like the, the five, um, there's like, there's like six fallacies and arguments mm. and it's like straw manning expertise bias. And I forget the other ones. Those are two. I always bring up though. Um, yeah. Expertise bias is the one that a lot of people fall into and no one notices also. <laughs> That's when like, for example, I play Chucky a lot. I know a lot about Chucky. I know a lot of his numbers. Therefore, anything I say about him is gospel because I'm an expert. Oh, I see. I see. I that's, see. That's that's expertise bias. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can never be wrong about Chucky because I've studied him like a book. Hmm. I think actually a lot of people have that mentality with DVD. Oh yeah, and, for for sure. And it's really prominent, actually. I think, especially on Twitter. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. My opinions on Chucky are sometimes wrong. Or, like not, not even opinions they're just flat out wrong and bad and people should yeah. call me out for it but they don't say because say with yeah same with <laughs> me with Sadako. like yeah it... sometimes you just say something that's not correct even if you know the character like the back of your hand you can still be incorrect about things yeah not to not to throw shade at, at odd starva or anything but you know like it, it's it happens a lot with him and it's not his yeah fault. It's, it's you know it's a lot of his uh it's a lot of followers fault, but like, you know, he'll say something and people will treat it as gospel because he's Ot Starva and he's an expert. So clearly he can't be saying something wrong. Yeah, exactly. Um, like, and that's not, it's just not how this works. Mm -mm. <laughs> like just because someone's a mathematician doesn't mean they don't ever mess up their math problems. Everybody, like everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. And then, you know, expertise bias also comes into the sense of, only seeing it from that perspective as well. Yeah. Like for Ots, if Ots has one big problem sometimes, and this is a problem with a lot of veteran players, and he's a little better about it than most, but um we forget about new players sometimes when we talk about things. Oh yeah, like you only talk about like one half of like uh player base while the other half is completely different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we completely just forget about talking about it in general, like like the tutorial. Yeah. Like, no one ever talks about how bad the tutorial is. I know we we talked about it. I actually like hadn't thought that much about it actually, and I think it's something that people should talk about more. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's just it's so strange. Uh, but yeah, and then there's straw manning, which everyone knows what that is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At this point, everyone knows what straw manning is. If you don't, it's when you. It's basically what I've kind of been doing all night, but uh, to a much to to a malicious 
degree where mm -hmm. your entire argument falls under the basis of making such a ridiculous statement and makes the other person look bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's straw manning is definitely um it it's so I, I blame Twitter. I blame Twitter. I was I was just about to say I think I see that every single day on Twitter. The, to be fair, it's not their fault, it's Twitter's fault. Yeah. I blame Twitter for so much on how we talk about things. True. Why why is everyone so hyperbolic? Because of Twitter. Yeah. Because Twitter's word limits mean you have to be. Why is everyone so generalistic? Because Twitter's word Twitter. limits makes you have to be generalistic. Yep. Just the way Twitter makes people talk and then that gets like translated into the way they talk normally and it's Ugh, God. Yeah, it, it makes... it, it's it's just like with how I um because people have, have called me out for this. I I preface a lot of what I say, mm -hmm. and the reason I do that is because of Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I don't see. I don't blame you because I I sort of will do that too a little bit because of some interactions on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. It it has definitely affected like the way I do socialize a little bit, and it's kind of scary. Yeah, I <laughs> that it it did do that. Yeah, I, I forgot the video, um, and I've been trying to find it for, since I saw it. Uh, it's this woman talking about um, how she told somebody about her how old her child was. No, no, no. It was something about her kid, and she went on like a a two paragraph like preface. And mm -hmm. then she ended it with saying, see, nobody talks about it like that in real life, but I have to talk about that because if I don't talk about that uh, like that on Twitter, someone will call me out for not saying that thing because uh, they couldn't use common sense and realize that's not what I actually meant. Yeah, Twitter's the only place where um, <laughs> someone can make up an entirely new sentence that you did not even say and use it against you. Yeah, yeah, like a clown should be nerfed. Oh, so you think survivors should be buffed? I didn't say that at all. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and it happens so often. Yep. Especially on DVD Twitter. Oh my god. It's like my comment sections where people are like, uh, survivor main bias. Are you even watching the background footage or paying attention to anything I'm saying? Clearly, your channel is very Survivor main esque. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm sure the Chucky, the P100 Chucky banner, and constantly having Chucky uh, in the background, and you know, doing a whole series where I talk to killer mains. Survivor oh my bias. God. Survivor bias. Survivor main core. <laughs> if anything, I should be, be. I never, almost never get it, but like, I should, I should be accused of killer main bias. True. Um, but I <laughs> think kidding. I think the reason I don't is because a lot of my videos talk about um fixing killer by buffing survivors. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was gonna say because I feel like you talk the way you talk about topics is like in a way where people those type of people aren't really in your comments that much. I say that even though what happened recently. Yeah. <laughs> um I think that was an example of that kind of happening that's, a little bit. That's an bit. outlier, though, and I'm glad that's an outlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope I can keep that an outlier. Yeah, I agree. It, it, it's just like, like, I also feel like a lot of people in this game, I say a lot, I'm generalizing when I say that, but see, there's a Twitter talk right there. Um, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, like, can't comprehend someone who is trying to advocate for both sides. Yeah, I agree. Like I do, I play about thirty seventy killer survivor, like thirty percent survivor, seventy percent killer. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I have a bias towards killer, and I try to make that known. But I also try to be aware of it whenever I'm making a change, or talking about a change. Like at least you acknowledge it. And there's a lot of people that just don't acknowledge it and they act like they know both sides, even though they're very obviously biased towards one side. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, t I did that thing where I said adrenaline is the best design survivor perk in the game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and people were like, I, I'm clearly killer sided because I think that, or no, no, so I'm very survivor sided because I think that. It, n- no, I'm, uh, I just, it's just a well designed perk. It's just, yeah. it has a prerequisite. It only works in late game. It gives you a tangible reward. Um, you can play around it on both sides if you know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, I, adrenaline, <laughs> I, I think adrenaline's not like, I think, um, it's it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I will never understand adrenaline hate. Also, if you hate adrenaline, run Terminus. Oh, I actually love Terminus. Terminus is a fun perk. No one expects <laughs> it. I actually love to run Terminus on twins mm-hmm. because if you have like everyone injured and they all get broken with it, you can send Victor out and just go nuts with slugging. Fun fact about Terminus: um, it works on plague. Does it? Oh yeah, that's right. I think I. <laughs> Was it Ots that said something about that? I, forgot, I think it was. I, I forgot who did, but yes, Terminus works on Plague, and I think people forget that. It's so funny, like, they cleanse, expecting to get fully healed, and they're still broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, I love it. Uh, behavior never nerfed that, by the way. Like, it's fine. It is not a very common perk, even on her. Just keep it. It's such a funny interaction, and it should stay in the game. <laughs> It um, really is. Terminus is fun. Um, it's also I've said this before. I don't think Terminus is better than Noed, but um, it's like a pocket Noed kind of. Yeah. That they can't cleanse. I feel less dirty running Terminus than Noed for well, some reason. Yeah, it's their fault for not healing before. Um, before they pop the gin. Yeah. And if they really, really want to get rid of it, open the gate. True. Um. By the by the way, combine it with Blood Warden. And no way out. <laughs> yeah, well, no, 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 yeah, no, don't, don't do. Well, maybe with no way out. I, I think no way out would take too much time. I uh, sometimes would run it with no way out, Blood Warden, and, and like batteries just for fun, mm. and just have like a crazy end game. Yeah, it, I would. I would run that on Chucky sometimes, actually, with portable TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, portable TV. I fucking. I, I think people rate that that add on way too high sometimes but um oh i agree i don't think it's that great no honest. i don't think it's that great at all like it only works in in-game i think so you're you're going add-on list for for 90 percent of the match yeah i just think it's kind of a funny add-on to oh, be honest i love it i also love that the um the scream doesn't last long enough yeah so he's like <laughs> charging with no scream for the last couple seconds uh, yeah yeah uh i think uh we're we're pretty much done here. I do want to. I, I, I'm not going to make this last much longer. I am curious on your opinion on uh, because we kind of talked about it with zoning. Um, what mm. is your opinion on faking powers? So like Ooh. like ten like 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 Nemesis Tentacle, or like fake winding up a Huntress Hatchet. I think for the most part it's fine. Um, I think I mean with Pyramid Head sometimes it does get a little obnoxious, but there's a reason they're doing it. But that we discussed earlier. Yeah, well, and, and like with, with um, because I do it on Chucky, and I think he's one people forget can do it. Oh, yeah, Chucky can actually do it really easily. Um, you just tap it. And he, yeah. he does the screen, and then it makes him want to dodge. <laughs> yeah, or sometimes, yeah. Or, or like, you know how I said earlier, uh, running into him is the best way to dodge it. I've had people do that. <laughs> it's mm-hmm, funny. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I still think it's fine. I know people complain. It's like, it's so boring. I want to, like, dodge the power. But, like we said I, earlier. I <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's fine because... I don't know. The killer is not going to use their power every single time. So I think it's unrealistic to to expect them to never fake. If that makes sense. Yeah, well, also, it's like, sometimes it's just better to fake. Yeah, like, you're not always going to use your power in every scenario. Sometimes you're going to just fake it and get more value from that. Yeah, I think what Pyramid Head, Pyramid Head's a good example. Um, cause I, I think, in my opinion, there's, like, the brain-dead way to zone, and then there's, like, the smart way to zone. Yeah. Like, if you're really far away from a window, for example, and, like, you're not walking up to it with your sword in the ground, but, or, I'm sorry, knife, um, with, mm-hmm. with your knife in the ground, but you, like, tap it before they hit the window so they don't do it. I think that's fine. Yeah, because I feel like you're also kind of mind-gaming them a little bit by doing something like that. Because mm-hmm. they 
they wouldn't expect it. Yeah. yeah, and then they're calling. They're either calling your bluff or you're calling their bluff. Um, it's very similar to like like when survivors fake going over a pallet or a window. Like, I I don't have a problem with that. No. Um, some people do, but. <laughs> I, I think those those interactions are mostly healthy for the game, to be honest. I, I don't really have much of a problem with them. Yeah, I really wish they would stop getting rid of stuff. It's like, um... And this is why when people call me Killer Main or Survivor Main, like... I, like, th- remember, uh... I forgot what, what it was actually called. What, it happened on Macmillan, where you could, like, drop down and instantly vault. Oh, um... I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, f- I don't remember what it was called, but I do remember it. They shouldn't have gotten rid of that. No, because actually, I think that... I mean, it did make main a little more annoying, but also, at the same time, it kind of made looping it a little more fun, to me, at least. It's it's also, like, a case of, like... Like, because... Th- if, if I start talking about this, we're going to be here for another hour, but <laughs> I'm going to bring it up anyways. <laughs> It also brings in the question of what is skill. Yeah. Because people are like, that's not skillful. You're just pressing two buttons. Well, okay, but is, do- is the dodging skillful, <laughs> you know? <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't, well, the, you know, with dodging also, we didn't, I didn't even mention this. Um, what if the, what if the killer misses because the person is so bad, they can't predict them? Exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> Technically speaking, the survivor is doing something unskilled. Like, how many times have you missed, like, a hunter's hatchet because someone didn't dodge? Many, many times. I actually say that, like, and my friend also says this a lot, that we often, like, will miss, like, lower hour players more than, like, higher hour players as hunters because we. it's like you expect what higher hours players are going to do. Mm-hmm. But when the, the newer player, uh, when they, like, I don't know pre-drop a pallet randomly and you expected them to actually like loop it it's like oh (laughs) they they did something that you didn't expect entirely because their experience is a little different so i think there's definitely that yeah because it's like 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 i said it's like ghost i i i can remember this very distinctly so ghostface has an add-on uh, when he got his update um Mm -hmm. there's a couple add-ons that make it so when when someone reveals you uh, they get a debuff, like, oblivious or exhausted or something like that. Um, yeah. I remember this very distinctly. I was trying to get value out of this add-on once, and I was I was under the impression, because everyone else on the match was doing it, um, that uh, this one Steve I was going against that I knew had dead hard would, mm. uh, would reveal me. Um, he didn't. And I thought, wow, that Steve was really smart for not revealing me, so he still had his dead hard. That, In-game wow. chat happens. He had 10 hours in the game. <laughs> I... He did so well because he was so bad. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant with um, Huntress. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> or like people that like, if you're winding up as Huntress and they just hold W and you throw it out expecting them to actually dodge and it's like, what? And they're yeah. not looking behind them at all. Yeah. Or or my favorite is uh, when you mind game yourself as killer because you're expecting them to expect you to mind game. If that yeah. makes any sense. Like, uh-huh. I've said it, like, it's funny because if you watch higher tier players and, like, newer players, you'll see the difference. But it's funny to watch, like, how the looping is, to a degree, very similar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because the higher tier player is, like, knows the mind games they know what to watch for so like they're not buying into it and the lower tier doesn't so they're also not buying into it (laughs) it's really funny when you like think about it Um, yeah there there was like this um there was like uh i played when i played rainbow six siege there was like this uh there's a trap character in that game named frost who should have got the trapper skin by the way and didn't uh damn (laughs) uh i forgot who got it but it wasn't it wasn't her and it would have made so much sense on her. Uh anyways, there there was like a running joke where it's like the bear traps only affect uh they they only affect uh middle tier players. Oh because, man. Because higher tier players are good enough to expect them. 
and lower players are so terrified of them they check every window. <laughs> so the only players that like get hit by them are the ones who are quote like it shouldn't work on but it does. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um it's like Yoru and Valorant. Yoru and Valorant's funny because he's he's a character about deception. He sends up a clone, he can teleport, but he can also fake the teleport. Um so the players <laughs> It's funny because the players he works against is the same. It's the middle tier people, the average player. New players it's, don't get tricked. That's so funny to think about. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, like new players don't get tricked. Veteran players don't get tricked. It's just those medium players. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, once again, in, in Dead by Daylight, it's like, you know, veteran players don't really fall for mind games most of the time. Sometimes they do. Um, but yeah, they don't fall for mind games because they know all the mind games and what the killer is going to do. Mm -hmm. um, newer players also don't fall for mind games because they don't know to look for them. Exactly. The, but the middle tier, those players, yeah, they fall for them. Because <laughs> even, yeah, even the yeah. simple ones, like it's it's it, it's such a weird like discussion in my opinion, just because it's like, it it is yeah. I never really talked about that in depth before, and it makes a lot of sense now, actually. Because I tell people all the time, it's like, if you're going up against someone who clearly, like, has 9,000 hours in the game, the best thing you can do is not mind game and just brute force it. Yeah, I agree. They're going to call every mind game you have, and you're just going to waste more time. Mm-hmm. I agree, if, yeah. If, if you're playing an M1 killer at Shaq, and someone knows what they're doing... Stop doubling back and just fucking just just get the pallet out of the way as fast as you can. Yeah, exactly. It, it's yeah, it's, it's your best bet. Unless they're just goofing around, but you can bet that during the match. <laughs> yeah, um, especially if they have a lot of hours. Yeah, it, it, it's just yeah, it, it's well, it's, it, but that brings into the topic of, like I said, what is skill in this game? Mm -hmm. And once again, no one's really been able to give me an answer. You'll find that answer soon enough. <laughs> I'm sure someone in the comment section is already writing down a five-page memoir on why, um, or what skill is. It, it, I guess. It, it's just like... Like, like I said, like... I forget which, which podcast I was doing it on, or which killer it was. But, like, you know, is dodging skill, is, is macro play skill? Hmm. Because some people would say it's not. That's just knowledge. That's not skill. That's another interesting one, actually. Yeah. It's like, so is skill only chases? But then, like, what what happens in the chases? Is that skill or is that players making mistakes? Yeah, it's, it's like it's pre-dropping skill if the reason they pre-dropped was because they knew they had to. Yeah. Like, if you wait last, and I, I say pre-dropping, we all know what I mean. I don't actually mean, like, dropping the pallet immediately. But, like, mm -hmm. if someone loops the tile as long as they can and then drops the pallet, is that skill? It goes so deep, it really does. Because Yeah, because it's like, technically, they didn't really do anything skillful. They just looped for as long as they could. Yeah. And then they pressed one button. And it, it also depends on the tile, too, I think. If it's, like, a tile, they can't mind game. So, where there's... I don't know. There's... <laughs> It goes so deep that I deep. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then for like Huntress and Deathslinger, it's like, is the aim skill? Can that one even be debated? Because I would say it is, but I guarantee you there's someone who's like, no, it's not. And they're going to like bring hitboxes into it and mm -hmm. be like, oh, hitboxes, like, I don't know. Hitboxes make the aim less skillful and things like that. It, it, it's just, it's, it's very, it's a very deep topic. And I think people don't like, and I understand why once again, Twitter is where most of this happens. Uh, yeah. Cause so, you're like, you're making me think about it pretty deep. Like my mind is like, Oh wow. That's, that's a lot deeper than at least I think people think of it on the surface. Yeah. And then at the end of it, it's like, okay, well that's a 50, 50. It's like, well, is our 50 50s bad? Yeah. Because, I mean, if you really want to get down to the, if you really want to be reductive, everything is a 50 50 in this game. Exactly. It's either a 50 50 or a guarantee. Yeah, 
Exactly. So, which would you rather have? I think they would rather have the 50-50 where they still have a chance. Yeah, but a lot of people hate 50-50s. So, then they're stuck in the guaranteed. (laughs) But a lot of people hate those, too. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like... I, I, yeah, like I said, it's something I could probably talk about for hours, bringing up many examples, not just in this game, but in other games. Like, like is managing cooldown skill? <laughs> like, uh, what, what, about, what about patrolling totems? Like, knowing which totems are where? Is knowing where to hook somebody skill? Or is that just knowledge? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Like, people say camping isn't skill, which I would agree, it probably isn't, but is knowing when to camp, where, and how, that is skill. Right? Is knowing when to tunnel somebody out skill. (laughs) (laughs) Knowing when to body block, knowing when not to, knowing when to 99 the doors, knowing when not to. Knowing when to jump in a locker, knowing when to crouch tech. Okay, that one's one's different. Um. (laughs) Is anything in this game skill? (laughs) <laughs> Is anything in any game really skip? Well, well, okay. But because the way people talk about it, to me, it seems like the only skillful things in this game are things that can be dodged. Yeah. And then we go back to the discussion before. Is dodging skill? And then I still don't have an answer. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest, I just don't know. <laughs> Which it's, is fine! I'm glad you said that, because most people won't say that. It's, I, like, I, I've tried to find an answer for it, and I just, I, there's nothing. I'm asking the question, and I don't even have a fucking answer. I really don't know. It's definitely a question that makes you think a little bit. Not a little bit, it makes you think. Because <laughs> I mean, like, like people, like you know, are like, oh, it's just out perked the other person. Well, right, but if the game was like decided at the beginning of the match, then it really didn't, like, yeah, yeah, and then it's like, well, is knowing what items and what add-ons and what perks, like, all that do is that skill, and then knowing how to play around it if you can or can't, like, like buckle up for the people, right? I, I like mm-hmm. we can argue all day that it's like OP and like uncounterable. Um but there's still like the positioning of it too, like you have to actually get into position to do it. Does that take skill? Is body mm-hmm. blocking the person that got hit, like or that got up or did it, is that skill? Exactly. Like like I did that the other day to get a grab. Someone mm-hmm. someone it was on Eerie uh into the main bu- right right by the main building. They did buckle up for the people. And I yeah. walked in front of the door and waited so they couldn't just run away and counted the 10 seconds. Yeah. So it forced them to go to the vault to the left. They were close enough so it was a medium vault and I got a grab. It's definitely. There's a lot, I think, in, in games in general that could be that question could be asked for. Yeah, it, it's, it's just interesting and I don't and I understand why it doesn't get brought up. It's such a um, I'm so reductive, that's the wrong word. Um, it's it's such an overarching topic with no definitive answer, and people hate it when things don't have a definitive answer. They really do, yeah. Um I mean I'm a centralist. People fucking despise me. Uh <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um once again, like, once again, it shows up in my comment sections. Like I said, people call me a survivor man, people call me a killer man, because apparently I have to pick a lane. I can't just be on both sides, apparently. I was gonna say you can't just be like in between both. Yeah, I can't. I can't think scamper is bad because I play killer. Um, <laughs> I can't think old Sadako was bad because I play killer. You know what I mean? Like, you have to think everything survivor related is bad, apparently, because killer main. Ha ha. <laughs> but once again, I even said it. I've said this before with like four of the people buckle up. Um, my suggestion for a change for that because Soul Guard exists is Mm -hmm. make it so i always forget soul guards you right you get the endurance yes yeah make buckle up give the person giving up the endurance make soul guard give the person getting uh uh picked up the endurance 
And that way, like, the only way you could have both people with endurance is if they have two separate perks. Yeah, yeah, yeah three. Oh, three, technically, because for yeah, the people. Because for the people, and it's yeah, like, if that right. is If that is two people's entire build, that's I'm way more fine fair. Yeah. with that. Exactly, yeah. Um, also, Buckle Up needs to be nerfed for that reason alone, by the way. Because Soul Guard exists, and people forget it exists. Because Buckle Up is just better than Soul Guard. <laughs> So well, okay. Solgar does have something else going on, but it's an effect that like no one ever fucking thinks about. It's it in theory, Solgar is unlimited unbreakables. Oh yeah, isn't it like if a hex is up? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can pick yourself up. You can up, pick yeah. yourself up. Yes. Yeah. People forget about that. But the other problem with that is most killers aren't bringing hexes. I actually loved running Solgar when it first came out. Um. Yeah, most people aren't running hexes, so that almost never happens. It, it, it runs into the problem of... And that's why it has its second effect. Um, because if it didn't, there would literally be matches where it didn't do anything. Yeah. And it's not like a situation of like, oh, it could have done something. No, it's like, it just didn't. It literally didn't, yeah. <laughs> um, which, which is the problem a lot of perks have in this game. And, you know, that, that brings in the... <laughs> this is why I love talking about this game. Because, like, that, that, that brings in the discussion point of... Um, Absolutely. The discussions are never ending yeah. with DVD. That brings in the discussion of, like, should perks... Like, should a perk always have relevance? Like... Wh- or why- be, like, Shattered Hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or should... Per- like, perks should find that middle ground, ideally, but, like... And I'm fine with some perks being niche, but I think there were too many niche perks in this game. Yeah, I agree. Like, like we, we hate life, but, like, it works, and it always does something, and you always notice it doing it. It's always consistent. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's the problem. That's what most... It's like, why do killers run uh, pain res pop? Because it, it works. It works. Like, it's all, it always works. Uh, I mean, okay, pain res is... I, I can hear the arguments now. Uh, I actually came to my mind. I was like, sort of always works. It, if you're yeah. on Swamp with, like... Your Pandora hooks in the corners. Good I was luck, playing but. Toba, and uh, the hooks were all right beside each other in the corner of the only corner of the map with no gens. Oh God! I lit the only time I ever went over there was at the end game. I lit. I played the match with three perks, and That's actually, so bad. no, no, my build was corrupt intervention, pain res pop. Um, uh, 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 uh. uh Shit, Grim Embrace. Mm. So, technically, I played... So, after Corrupt went down, and I had no Pain Res hooks. So, that's... that's I'm playing the game with two perks. And then I hook all four people, Grim Embrace goes off. Now I'm playing the game with just Pop. God. Yeah. <laughs> I've had I've had very similar situations happen with Pain Res and... Um, RNG, I guess, if you will. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like with with Windows, you know, the whole Windows uh, Windows debate. Oh people, yeah, people yeah. bring Windows all the time because it's good info and it's always useful. I I honestly, as a very forgettable person, I like Windows mm-hmm. just so I don't have to memorize every single palette. <laughs> you know, I've been running um, the blindness add on on Larry. Uh, a oh lot, yeah, and it is surprisingly effective against Windows. The uh, Yoichi's fishing net on Sadako is actually pretty good against it, too. Yeah, um, it, people really do hate Windows to start running blindness. I, I guarantee you, you'll and, and a lot of killer add ons do suck as far as they go. Some like Larry, I, I was talking about this in, in the Singularity podcast, um, which isn't which will be out when this is out, but uh, Larry has the best blindness in the game. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I've heard some things. I think one of my friends. I think it was one of my friends that talked about his blindness add-on at one point. It's it's in my opinion the best blindness in the game. Yeah, I uh, agree. Because the only way to remove it is with an EMP. Mm-hmm. It has no time limit. So in theory, if you're chasing someone, and it's very easy to tag people in chase. Yeah. So like if Single- you're, if you're using it to counter windows of opportunity, like they're always blinded, so they can't yeah. rely on it. So now they they're now they're down to three perks. It's kind of like, like a, like I said with Yoichi's fishing net. Um, 
that add-on though it isn't as effective as singularities i don't think because mm. it is easier to remove condemn stacks compared to emp and tmps but the fact that they're basically permanently blind if they have more than three stacks can make blindness really in really bad if they had windows as well yeah blindness is just one of those i, I feel like it's often overlooked and i know why yeah i agree um i know why it is but honestly uh like like because it's one of those things uh where you can't see the tangibleness of it a lot of the time uh -huh. so there's no feedback so people don't really run it for that reason um but go into a survivor stream and watch the moment they get blinded by anything they're freaking out <laughs> they're not freaking out necessarily but they'll they'll comment on it yeah well i not freaking out but if they're like on midwitch or something mm -hmm. they they might freak out a little bit uh and it's not just windows uh it also True. stops people from seeing hooks unless they're looking at the bubble um it stops pretty much a bond which is decently common um oh yeah bond too and empathy as well and bond empathy uh Fucking, um, I'm trying to think of another one that people run a lot. Even things like, like Blast Kindred. Mine, Trail of Torment. Oh yeah, that's I, another I, one. Yeah, Trail of Torment. It's actually I, actually, I never thought about that actually. Yeah, if you run, if you run blindness with Trail of Torment, they won't see the gen that's yellow, so they won't know you have it. That's kind of big brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Now, thank God, blindness doesn't work on killer stuff because. I've heard suggestions it should. No. Uh, Sadako? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, oh you took God. a tape? Well, now you can't see your, your TV across the map, and now you're going to get condemned and die. <laughs> oh, my God. Pig? Oh, my God. No. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's getting herself blind, so... True. Um, <laughs> someone brought that up to me when I mentioned that uh, pigs are just going to start camping boxes again. I was I was a bit of an asshole when I said that, but listen, I was being hyperbolic. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying everyone getting mad about the bear traps, I think, was overblowing it. It's all I was saying. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think I think the nerf they did and I'm fine with them reverting it. I'm just saying I think people were overblowing how much the nerf was going to affect her. Yeah, people I think also people were just so quick to jump on, oh, Pig got nerfed again, Pig got nerfed again, even though she really didn't. Yeah. And she was actually more buffed than anything, but yeah. Once again, if you're getting kills with your bear traps, trust me, 30 seconds wasn't going to make a difference. No. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I think we're going to call it there. <laughs> yeah, we went for a long time. <laughs> we did. We very much did. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I, it was a lot of fun, though. It is. I, I love doing these. It's, it's nice to... Um, Get away from Twitter and all the complaining on YouTube and the comment sections. And just, yeah, and just talk. Yeah. It was nice, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for having me. Of course, and as always, I want to thank you for doing this. Um, and uh, Of course. And people can find you on Twitter. I will link that below. Yes, um, yes, thank you. You should definitely follow. Uh, a lot of good clips, a lot of good takes. Um, yes, a lot, yes. A lot, of, a lot of funny stuff, too. <laughs> um. But yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Uh, I think... Who's next? Ghostface? Yes, Ghostface is next. Uh, I'll see you guys next week for that. Have a good one. As always, my links and stuff are below too. I stream, you guys should check that out. And uh, yeah. Bye! Bye-bye. Subscribe, damn it. I'll be back. I always come back and so should you, you moron.